W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. The Honda Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot are in a league of their own when it comes to rugged capability. Their relentless power and versatility make these vehicles the ultimate challengers for exhilarating adventures and formidable terrain. But it's not just performance that makes these cars special. It's the unwavering determination that inspires everything we do. That's why we're KBB.com's best value brand of 2023. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA's moving lives forward. Available all-wheel drive on pilot based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it. It can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We want to get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. The following sports special is a broadcast presentation of Talk Radio WRNR, Martinsburg. It's time for the excitement of West Virginia high school football. To get you ready for today's play-by-play action, we'll bring you interviews, in-depth analysis, and important game information on the pregame show. So let's get things started by going to the stadium and join our Talk Radio WRNR broadcast team. Good evening from Morgan Field in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia for tonight's matchup between the Hampshire Trojans and the Berkeley Springs Indians as we welcome you into the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems providing custom integration services like home and office automation, home theater networking, audio video distribution and more. Call them at 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. Colin McLaughlin here for Talk Radio WRNR and TV10. Alongside me is Dylan Bishop, our cameraman. Daryl Miller back in the studio is Nick Verzolini. It is homecoming night for the Berkeley Springs Indians as they search for win number one of the Wes Eddy era, and they take on the 2-5 and five Hampshire Trojans, Dylan. It's homecoming here for everybody, including us. Yes, it is. Class of 2016, Colin McLaughlin and Dylan Bishop, Berkeley Springs High School. How about it? Haven't really been back here for for much of any homecomings, other than I think maybe two years ago. But aside from that, not much. But this is a good opponent for Berkeley Springs on their homecoming because this has been a pretty competitive series overall. Last eight meetings between these two teams. Hampshire has outscored Berkeley Springs, but only by 18 points over eight games so that's an average score of 31 to about 29 28.75 to be exact but last year Hampshire got the win by two touchdowns three years before that Berkeley Springs was on a winning streak with wins of 71 to 40 in 2021 41 34 in 2020 and 40 to 12 in 2019 but now this first year without Terry Ray at head coach now at Washington High School. This is Wes Eddy's first season. Of course, he was at Washington High School himself as a coach before. But now, you know, it's some struggles here for Berkeley Springs, which, you know, sometimes they're, they're prone to have some. But they've got some pieces here. Aiden Kane is a very 
uh, entertaining quarterback. He can really run the ball well. He had over 175 yards rushing last week, and I think we could see him put up similar numbers tonight, possibly. We're going to step aside, take our first break on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. On the other side of that break, we'll have our check of the area schedule. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is, it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Flu season is just around the corner. Protect yourself with a flu shot. Most people six months and older are encouraged to get the flu vaccine every season. WV Medicine announces two fall vaccine clinics for your convenience. October 26th at M1 Primary Care, 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. October 27th at Spring Mills Primary Care and Pediatrics from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call ahead for an appointment. Knock out the flu this season. Get your flu shot at one of these fall vaccine clinics. Welcome back to the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. It's now time for the check of the area schedule brought to you by Rocks Local Markets. Fast, fresh, friendly, Rocks. It's week eight of the West Virginia high school football season, and here's where we currently stand. The Washington Patriots are 2-5 and five overall after losing 68 to nothing last week to the Martinsburg Bulldogs. Washington is on a three-game losing streak, and this week sits at 23rd overall in the WVSSAC playoff rankings. This week is the Patriots' bye week. Next week, Washington travels to Hampshire. Unfortunately, Washington head coach Terry Ray was sick this week and could not do an interview. The Martinsburg Bulldogs continue to remain undefeated after winning 68 to nothing last week against the Washington Patriots to improve the 7 and 0 overall. Martinsburg now sits at 5th place in this week's WVSSAC playoff rankings. This week is also the Bulldogs' bye week. Their next game will be next Friday night when they host Spring Mills. Martinsburg head coach David Walker gave us his thoughts on last week's game and shared what they're doing this week. I was pleased with the way we came out uh, right from the start. I thought we'd just, you know, come out on a, with a fast start and just, you know, took care of business. So uh, I was pleased that we were able to do that, especially, you know, being homecoming and um, all the festivities and the distractions. So I thought our guys actually come out and played pretty focused. I thought we come out and just, um, you know, got on them pretty early. And, and we really, you know, we've, we've had a couple of slow starts, and you know, in some games. And, uh, and and obviously, I mean, I think we were obviously were a lot better team than Washington, which, you know, had the most to do with it. But I thought our guys just come out and executed really well. Given the day off, we'll have practice, uh, you know, the remainder of the week. So just work on some fundamental things, but, you know, also preparing for our next game. So it'll be kind of a regular work week for us. The Jefferson Cougars are now 4-2 and two overall. Last week, Jefferson beat South Hagerstown 34-15. to This week, the Cougars have cracked the top 10 in the WVSSAC playoff rankings, coming in at 9th. This week, Jefferson has a tough road test against the 5-1 and one Millbrook Pioneers out of Winchester, Virginia. Head coach of the Cougars, Craig Hunter, gave his thoughts on Millbrook. You know, anytime you're staring down a single-wing offense, there's going to be some things where, like I said, we got to play clean assignment football this week because we're going to be staring at a single 
wing. So a lot of confusion, a lot of misdirection. So we just got to play straight, clean football defensively. Offensively, we just got it. Because they're running a single wing, they're going to run the ball 98% of the time. So with that being said, every offensive opportunity needs to be a good one because we don't know how much time uh, they're going to run off the clock when they're when they're running their offense. So the key thing defensively is we got to get stops. Offensively, we got to take advantage of those stops and score uh, when we get the ball because you, you don't know how many how many opportunities you're going to have when you're looking at single wing single wing offense. The Spring Mills Cardinals soared to a 6-1 and overall record after a 26-23 victory over Frankfurt last week. This week in the WVSSAC playoff rankings, Spring Mills is tied for 6th place along with the Bridgeport Indians. This week, the Cardinals look for revenge over the 3-3 three and -three University Hawks. Spring Mills interim head coach Marcus Law shared what preparation is like for a long road trip. Well, we're trying to really treat this thing as like looking down the road here as far as the preparation piece. Southern. Um, obviously, it's about two hours, 15 minutes of work, work with drive. And there's a lot that kind of goes into it, especially for myself and the rest of the staff. You know, given this is a long trip we've taken, being finding out itinerary and getting into the points, uh, uh, lining different things up. And for the kids, they're you know, treating this as a business trip. You know, you get that first half, we can relax, but then get closer to changing that mindset. So there's a lot on, on that side of things. And then not just that, being far away from home, um, truly just being kind of us at the University High School. But then looking at University High, I mean, they have some talent. They've got a couple of kids out there. You got, you got the Blunt brothers um, and a couple few other guys who can really make some things happen there. So it's, it's, got, it's definitely not one of those things we walk in when we're, we're going to have to fight tooth and nail to, uh, to pull this one out. There's only one Eastern Panhandle Athletic Conference matchup this week, and it will take place tomorrow at 11 a.m. at Shepherd University between Hedgesville and Musselman. The Musselman Applemen have now lost four straight after a 42-14 loss to Cabell Midland last week. Musselman is now 2-4 and four overall, which puts them 17th overall in this week's WVSSAC playoff rankings. Head coach of the Applemen, Brian Thomas, talked about what it's like playing on Saturday morning. It's a different schedule. It's a different time. So, yeah, obviously. Obviously, it kind of throws you off kilter a little bit. Um, you know, at the same time, it throws them off a little bit too. So that's not really an excuse, but it, it, it is different from normal just because you got to think of everything. You know, you got an extra day to kind of prepare and, and, and to rest a little bit and to practice and to put stuff in. And, you know, you're playing at a different time. You know, you're playing in the morning. You're playing at a neutral venue. So, you know, there's a lot of things that I guess if you wanted to make them excuses, they could be excuses. But, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, we're going to be playing a conference team we're going to be playing on a football field so you know football is football you got to show up and play at the end of the day no matter where it's at so you know we're not going to use any of that stuff that could be excuses as an excuse we're going to we're going to show up and play the Hedgesville Eagles are 3-4 and four overall after a 28-12 loss to the Liberty Lions last week. With that record, the Eagles come in on this week's WVSSAC playoff rankings at number 21. Hedgesville head coach Matt Faircloth shared his thoughts about the longest-running rivalry in the area. You know, typical muscle team, big, strong, physical, fast, disciplined. You know, for us, we know what we're going to get. I mean, it's definitely a rivalry every time this game comes around. And, you know, even in the youth league, it's always been an intense game. Uh, you know, me and Coach Thomas, we went to school together here. And we actually were texting back and forth this morning. You know, even though it's a rivalry, you still, you know, you still respect them. You still got to, you know, go out and play the game. It's a big game. There's, there's no doubt. And it shouldn't be a good crowd on Saturday. Shepard, we got to go battle. And you know, if you can't get up for this game, then, then maybe football isn't for you. And you know, that's what we've been preaching to them all week. You know, let's go battle it out. And at the end of the day, let's see where it falls. That was your check of the area schedule brought to you by Rocks Local Markets. Fast, fresh, friendly Rocks. Once again, our matchup tonight features the Hampshire Trojans and the Berkeley Springs Indians. We will continue to preview this matchup coming up next on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. You're tuned into West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio WRNR. In TV 10. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the big boys to the wing T formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for $12 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $12.
I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna call my parents. Dad, come over. The purse gets done. <laughs> the Traeger Connected Experience. Everything you need for epic flavor. And then some. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. At Flea Motor Company off I-81 at 993 Hedgesville Road is a family-owned and operated business providing the Eastern Panhandle with the highest quality pre-owned vehicles and customer service since 1997. Effley is a pre-owned Carfax Advantage dealer. We're proud to be your partner serving the community. You're local, we're local, so why not buy local? Call us at 304-267-7172 or see us at 993 Hedgesville Road. If you want to sell your car, we buy cars too. Check us out at Heffley.com. The Heffley Motor Company, a nice place to do business. Welcome back to the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. Live from Morgan Field in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia for the Hampshire Trojan Berkeley Springs Indians football game tonight with kickoff at 7 p.m. Let's now get into the Hampshire Trojans. Two and five overall so far this year in Aaron Rule's fifth season as the head coach, Dylan. Yeah, he's he coming into his uh, fifth season after taking over for Darren Grace, who was the longest tenured coach uh, Hampshire ever had 15 years 28 years on the staff altogether but so far this year they've gotten themselves two good wins over Grafton and Preston 35-20 uh, over Grafton 34-33 over Preston and then the rest of the schedule some some losses uh, multi-score losses to some of the better teams in double a and some even though know, even triple a lost 28 to 7 to Hedgesville uh, big loss 57-24 to Frankfurt lost by 24 to Kaiser as well and, you know, those are all tough teams in double A. Those, those are teams that you, you expect to have big losses to at, at this level. Those are really talented teams. But overall, again, they come into this having won last year against Berkeley Springs. And they've, you know, last eight meetings, they've outscored Berkeley Springs just by 18 points over those eight games. But they have lost three of the last four before their win last year. They were on a three-game losing streak. So they're going to look to try to build their own losing streak here tonight, or their own winning streak here tonight, as they try to look for their second in a row against the Indians. Let's step aside, take another break here on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. On the other side of that break, we'll hear from the head coach of the Hampshire Trojans, Aaron Rule. This is West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV 10. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family. And we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. Before the invitations and the dress, the flowers, cake, candles, or vows, there is an answer to a question proposed with a ring. Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. 
with four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome back to the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. It's now time for our coaches interview brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. Now joined by the head coach of the Hampshire Trojans, Aaron Rule. Coach Rule, first time we get to see your program, so just tell us a little bit about how the season's gone so far, sir. Uh, I mean, we, we've had our struggles. Um, you know, it's, it's not gone quite like what we really had anticipated as a coaching staff and as a football program. Um, you know, we, we've had some tough battles with Hedgesville and Frankfurt. Uh, had a great win against uh, Preston County. Um, but, you know, if, if we could play every single one of our games the way we did those three games, then our win, our win column would have a few more wins in them. Uh, but we have struggled offensively in, in, in producing points and being able to run the football. Um, everything starts up front, and you know we we just we've struggled um, with with some of our guard play. And and then you know last week with the wetness, we we had some wet balls being snapped, and so we we struggled moving the football. Um, but aside from that, you know we we've stayed healthy for the most part and and that's really what we want to do and, and we're in this business trying to grow young boys into men and so we've we've done a pretty good job of that coach what would you say have been i guess some strengths of your team this year uh defensively um you know we we've done a lot of good things up front um so it's kind of weird that you know up front offensively we struggle but defensively we've done a really good job up front and then with our linebacker play uh, we've done a really good job. Um, offensively, there have been some games where we've been able, you know, when we have time in the pocket, we've thrown the ball really well. And then whenever we've been able to run the football, that's that's been a strength, but it's not been every game. And we, we just are very inconsistent um, as far as O-line play goes. But when we are uh, at our at our best, that's that's whenever we are able to protect the quarterback, and we've been able to run the football. But for the most part, we've been able to throw the ball really well. Coach Roy, I believe I saw this is your fifth or sixth season as the head coach, correct? Yeah, I'm I'm in my fifth season right now. Okay, so this being your fifth season, what are some things on the field and off the field that you've tried to instill into the program? Uh, never giving up. Um, you know, I, I, we, we've always our, – my motto has always been the most important play is the next play. So even if we get beat um, on one play, uh, we've got to be ready to line up and play the next play. Uh, and, you know, and against against Preston, um, we, we battled being 17 points down. We came back and, and won that football game. And then against Hedgesville, you know, we were in that game until a minute to go in the third quarter when, when things started going wrong. Uh, we had a few bad plays to end the third quarter, uh, but you know we continued to battle and continued to play in the fourth quarter against Frankfurt. Same thing, you know we were in that game for almost a, a full half, and then we came out second half a little bit flat, but we continued to battle. So the kids not giving up um, has has been a, a key emphasis, and and they have done that this year. So that's that's been a testament to them and to, to growing as a team. Coach, your team, 2-5 uh, and five right now. Um, you haven't reached above the three-win mark as a program in a long time. Uh, obviously, you still have a lot of games left to be played, but I, or a few games left to be played. How do you get this uh, team to the next step of getting you know, closer to a winning record and continuing to build this program? A lot of it has to do with with our opponent play. Um, you know, we we are triple triple A status, um, but as far as our program numbers, uh, we we compete more with the double A teams. Um, so we we've tried uh, we tried with our schedule changing up some things and getting teams that we compete with better. Um, you know, with with our kids, our kids are more um, you know wanting to go out and and chop firewood and cut grass, and they're FFA kids. 
and and we're trying to instill the same motto on the field as far as you know their work ethic and we're trying to build the program by walking the classes and walking the hallways and trying to recruit and trying to get our numbers up you know if we could have 12 to 15 kids per class then we would have a lot more numbers but right now we are you know we always have struggled to get anywhere from 40 to 50 kids and you know i'd like to be in the 60 to 80 range that way you know some of these guys we're not falling off from seniors and juniors to to try and forcing freshmen to come in and play against guys that have been in the weight room for three and four years and so that's been our biggest struggle and that's why we have consistently been a three three win team uh every season uh, and if we could get those numbers up, then I, I feel fully confident that we would be, you know, a 500 program or better. And that's been our goal every year. Um, but again, it, we we can't fault the kids for wanting to do other things. But we are trying to build this program, and we we try and convince kids that you know Friday Night Lights is where it's at, and we just gotta continue getting guys to keep coming out and and do better. Um, and, and then we'll be able to win whenever we have competition at every position. And to follow up on that, you know, you mentioned being a AAA school and, and obviously trying to find, I guess, teams on your schedule that you can compete with. We cover a lot of the EPAC teams here, so uh, you guys do have two EPAC teams on your schedule, but how do you like this uh, matchup with Berkeley Springs as a team that's relatively close regionally and, and gives you that good competition that you're looking for? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think Coach Eddie has has everything going. Um, you know, his first year over there uh, with Berkeley Springs. You know, we we've always had really good competitions with them, so we we match up really well because I feel like their kids are are like our kids, and our kids are like theirs. And so, you know, every every Friday night we we battle and we play a really good game against Berkeley Springs. And so, um, you know, I, I always like having them on the schedule just because their kids are about the same caliber as ours. And so we always match up really well. And it's always a, a good game. You know, the last uh, – looking at our numbers, you know, the last two years, we, we've had some really good games. Um, both teams have put points on the board uh, because we both had really good offenses and – and our defense, you know, when our defense buckled down last year is when, you know, we were able to, to take that game over. And then the year before that, when we were at your all's place, they, they hung 69 points on us. And, again, when their defense was able to get stops against our offense was when they were able to take over. So, really, it's all a matter of, of who's going to come out with the football last in these games. And, and I've always liked our games against Berkeley Springs. Staying with Berkeley Springs for this year, what has really jumped out to you on film or who's jumped out to you? And then a two-part question to make this, what does your team need to do to get the win? Uh, to be able to get the win, we've got to be able to stop your all's quarterback. Um, Berkeley Springs has a really good quarterback that's, that's very athletic. Um, he's able to throw the football, especially you know when he gets outside the pocket, if he's able to either run the football or can still throw the football, um, he, he can really hurt you. Um, I've seen... You know, as far as, far as running the football, he got a little, a good little running back that's able to run behind the offensive line. You know, the offensive line is 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 pretty stout. Um, you know, they they've got some good size to them. So we've got to be able to number one stop the run, and number two, we've got to make sure that they get the quarterback. Um, you know, we got to keep him uh, inside the pocket, and we can't allow him to to scramble or get vertical on us running the football. So we've got to be able to stop stop the counter, stop the power. Um, we've got to be able to stop the quarterback and get get the ball out of his hands. And um, offensively, you know, we've obviously we've got to be able to put points on the board to win the football game. Uh, we can't keep the defense on the field the entire time. And so, you know, offensively, we've got to be able to run the football, and uh, and that's where we're we're going to try and try and start. You know, hang our hat on the run game and and see where we can go and and just try and. Uh, try and start the game off pound and ground and, and see if we can keep the ball in our hands and keep it out of that quarterback's hands. All righty, Coach Rule, appreciate the time and good luck. Uh, not a problem. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you guys Friday night. That was our coach's interview brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons back for more of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. Right after this, you're tuned in to West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10.
Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer deaths in the United States each year. But do you know the radon levels in your home? Home is a place to live, love, and laugh, not a place to breathe air containing radon. The Berkeley and Morgan County Health Departments are distributing free confidential radon test kits, and you can get yours at the Berkeley County Health Department office in Martinsburg and the Morgan County Health Department office in Berkeley Springs. Protect your home and family. Get your free radon test kit today. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why Owners Just Do More no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. We welcome you back to Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, for the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Just under 28 minutes until kickoff between the Hampshire Trojans and the Berkeley Springs Indians. Dylan, let's now get into Berkeley Springs, a team 0-7 so far this year, trying to get its first win under Wes Eddy, the first-year head coach for Berkeley Springs. And to get there, they're going to need a big game from the quarterback, Aiden Kane. Yeah, he had a big game last week. He was able to put up uh, 175 rushing yards uh, on the ground. And that's kind of what they're going to have to rely on, you know, first year under West Eddy. They, they had some successful seasons under Terry Ray, at least by Berkeley Springs standards. They went 5-5 five five two years ago when they had Gavin Barkley at quarterback. They had Tymere Ross at wide receiver. Evan Thompson, a running back. Gavin Young at wide receiver as well as a freshman now at Hedgesville. He popped off the screen as well, even as a freshman, as a deep threat down the field. But now things have uh, adjusted. They went to Tymir Ross at quarterback last year. He was another dual threat guy, but you know it wasn't quite the same amount of firepower, so it was still tough for, Terry, or for Coach Ray before he moved over to Washington. And Wes Eddy in his first season, he, he came in inheriting a 10-game losing streak, and now that losing streak's up to 17. Last win was on November 5th, 2021, 40-13 against Moorefield. Or I should say they went 6-4 and four in 2021, uh, by the way. But that's, you know, this year has kind of been a trend for Berkeley Springs for a good bit of the last handful of years. The last playoff appearance was in 2007 when they went 9-3 and three and beat Logan in the first round, 55-40, lost in the second round to Scott. They've had nine coaches since 1980 and uh, four coaches in the last decade. They're currently 35th out of 37 in the AA playoff rankings. But there's things to like about this team. I, I do in particular think that Aiden Kane is, is an exciting player to watch, and he's going to probably put on a show today. The Hampshire's going to have a tough defense for him to handle, but I think that he's going to be able to put up some numbers for himself, and it should make for an interesting game. Let's step aside, take another break here on our W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show, and on the other side of that break, we'll hear from the head coach of the Berkeley Springs Indians, Wes Eddy, as well as a few players from Berkeley Springs. This is West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV 10. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, 
No dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Locust Hill Golf Course invites you to historic Charlestown, West Virginia for 18 holes of phenomenal golf. We're just an hour drive from the Baltimore, D.C. Beltway and one half hour drive from Winchester and Leesburg, Virginia, as well as Hagerstown and Frederick, Maryland. Each tee offers challenges across the 35 acres of lakes, ponds, and streams, which come into play on 11 holes. The Blue Ridge Mountains also provide a breathtaking backdrop to Locust Hill. Schedule your tee time today at www.locusthillgolfcourse.com or call 304-728-7300. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Welcome back to the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. It's now time to have our coaches interview brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons is now joined by the head coach of the Berkeley Springs Indians, Wes Eddy. Coach Eddie, it's your first year as the head coach. Just tell us a little bit about your program and what you've liked so far in your first year. We've had a uh, tough schedule this year. We've played a lot of playoff teams and uh, we started out with 38 kids when we came back to school in August and uh, the roster's growing up to 45 kids so we're excited that people right. want to be a part of this and uh, nobody's quit and every week we've uh, shown up and we've uh, given it our best effort. Why did you decide to take this position? What uh, I guess piqued your interest and what have you liked so far? Well, I always knew that there were good kids up here at this place. I knew this was a good community and uh, Coach Breeden, one of the assistants here, uh, is the one that basically uh, called me and told me about it and uh, asked me to come put a bid in and I did so and, and in the interview we there was, it was a great interview with the folks and uh, I ended up really uh, liking everybody in the interview committee so uh, that sealed the deal. So far your team unfortunately off to an 0-7 start even though wins and losses is mostly what people look at as a coach that's not something you always look at so what have you learned about your team so far this year here in year one for you these kids are really good kids they're not uh, there's no quit in them they keep coming back every single Monday and trying to get themselves better at something each single week that they can do on Friday night uh, and and that's all that we've done so I'm proud of the kids they faced a a schedule that uh, is extraordinarily difficult, but uh, there's never been excuses. Uh, we've played seven J or we've played six JV games this year, so we've only missed uh, one, and that was because of a uh, somebody else canceling, not us. So I'm I'm excited about the fact we have numbers growing and there's some interest. What are some of the goals that you put into place from day one up until this point now here for this program? We wanted to uh, get the attendance under control, which we've gotten a lot better with. Uh, we don't have too many missed practices uh, whatsoever. And uh, we also wanted to make sure that we had two programs this year, a JV and a varsity. And, and so far, we've been lucky enough to do so. What have you liked so far, uh, guys that have really stood out to you here in the first year that has stepped up and be leaders for your team? Well, uh, we have uh, Landon Hellman and uh, Connor Duvall and Aiden Kane that was uh, picked by the team to represent them. And uh, those three have done a really good job in uh, leading this group, not by action, but verbally and telling them this is the right, this is the wrong. And uh, I'm very pleased with what they've done so far. This week's homecoming week for you guys. How special of a week is it for you guys? And then we'll get into talking a little bit about Hampshire, your opponent. Yeah, this is a very special week because you're going to have a lot of alumni here. You'll have a huge crowd, and there's a lot of uh, excitement and investment into this game. So I'm excited for the kids, and I think that they'll have a uh, blast this week. Today's a parade to, and a uh, pep rally later this week. So there's a lot of things to look forward to. And, you know, I really think that uh, – if we could put four quarters together, we played a playoff team last week in Liberty Raw or Liberty uh, Harrison, and really took them, you know, through the first quarter, and uh, we we had some mistakes maybe along the way, but uh, 
I thought that we did pretty well against the playoff team. So now we got to string some more quarters together to be able to win a football game. So let's now get into your opponent, Hampshire. What have you seen from them so far this year on film? They do everything. Uh, against East Hardy, they were a running team with two backs. Uh, against Northern Garrett and some other teams, they've uh, uh, spread the ball out with their uh, quarter, number one quarterback, and uh, he was throwing the ball around a little bit. So in those cases, they were in two by two, three by one, and uh, they play an odd defense. Uh, four cross safeties, so they're in a 3-4, and uh, they like to bring pressures at you. So that's something we've been working on all week. What's your team need to do to get the win on Friday night? String the quarters together and don't make mistakes. And if anything bad happens to them, keep their head up and don't let their head go down. All right, anything else, Coach Eddie? No, thank you. Appreciate you coming here and doing this game. Appreciate the time and good luck. Thanks, sir. Thank you. This was our coach's interview brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons will be back for more of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show right after this. You're tuned into West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR, and CV10. Let's go! Drink some beers! Mountaineer! The Mountaineer Pub offers many daily specials, including trivia night Mondays, karaoke Tuesdays, steak night Wednesdays and Sundays, only swing night Thursdays, and DJ and or karaoke, again Fridays and Saturdays. And remember, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mondays through Fridays is happy hour with $2 domestic bottles and $2.50 domestic drafts. Let's go! Drink some beers! Mountaineer Pub! This is Senator Patricia Rucker. My record shows that I have led the fight for legislation to provide opportunity for West Virginians, strengthen families, protect our children, and improve education. But there is more work yet to do. West Virginia is on the rise, but we're still playing catch up. That's why I'm asking for your vote, so that I can go back to Charleston and continue the progress we have made. Paid for by Rucker for West Virginia, Mike Holtz, Treasurer, rucker wvcom after a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. Welcome back to the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. It's now time to go in the huddle for our player interviews. Brought to you by the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy, located at 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg. Call them today at 304-263-4343. Now joined by offensive and defensive linemen for the Berkeley Springs Indians, Luke Purdy. Luke, so far this year, just tell us a little bit about your team and what have been some things that you've liked so far this year. Uh, I think overall this year we've really come together as a group. You know, our record doesn't show how well we've we've improved this year. We went from, you know, not using the best like tactics and stuff like that and treatment of each other in the locker room to becoming a more tight knit group of people. So you play on both sides of the ball, offensive and defensive, up on the line. Which side do you like more and why? Uh, defensive, a hundred percent. It's just way more fun getting through there, hitting people as hard as you can. So let's go a little bit into this week's game. You guys take on Hampshire. What have you seen from them off the film? What are you most excited for in this matchup? Uh, I think we have a real good chance against Hampshire. Uh, they got a little bit of uh, turmoil going through their team right now, from what I understand. And uh, we try to remigate that throughout the year so far, and I think we got a real good chance against them. So what year are you here at Berkeley Springs? I'm a senior. All right, so it's your final year being a Berkeley Springs Indian. Uh, just tell us a little bit from start to finish um, how much you've seen yourself grow, and not only as a student, but maybe in the game of football as well. I've become a real way better student than I was in middle school. I mean, grades have just improved. Uh, according to football, I mean, we, we did good my first two years. We went three or four of my freshmen, and then six and four of my sophomore. 
But uh, last year we took a bad turn, went 0 and 10. But uh, this year we're hoping to remedy that and break that losing streak. What do you feel like your strengths are on the football field? Uh, personally, I feel like I'm a little bit faster than, nor than other linemen, uh, mainly because I'm a little lighter. Uh, but for the team, I think I think we got pretty good linemen. You know, we started out a little rough on the blocking side, but we've gotten real better at that, and the defense is getting through there much more. What do you guys need to do to get the win on Friday against Hampshire? Uh, we need to come together as a unit and just all give it our best, and then we need to leave that game way more tired than we came into it. And if we don't give it our all, it'll be like every other game this year so far. It's homecoming week for you guys as well. Uh, does that add a little bit of an extra excitement for you guys? Oh, definitely. You know, we love playing in front of our home crowd anytime, but homecoming, when it comes around here, you know you got to play your best because everyone's in them stands watching. All right, appreciate the time. Good luck. Thank you. So I'm now joined by the quarterback of the Berkeley Springs Indians, Aiden Kane. Aiden, just tell us a little bit about you taking over the role as quarterback for this program and uh, just the growth of you in that position. Uh, it's definitely an excited feeling. Uh, last year I came in and I was supposed to fight for the job. Uh, I didn't I didn't get the starting job last year, but whenever I came in, uh, my first game starting was against Hampshire last year, and it was actually an amazing game I had. I passed for over 270 for three touchdowns, three or four, and by halftime we were up on the game, but then I had an injury about the end of the third quarter, and when I came out, we had a downfall. So this is almost a full circle for you now. You get to take on Hampshire for homecoming game at home, trying to get your first win of the season. What are you most excited about in this game? I'm just excited it's homecoming. I'm excited it's a home game. Everyone's going to be there. Everyone's going to be cheering. Uh, it's definitely a revenge game for us. We, we should have took that uh, win back last year when it was a away game. It was their homecoming game last year when we played them. Uh, I definitely think we're going to come into this game excited with, uh, with power, and I think we can take this one. What do you feel like as a quarterback your strengths are, and then we'll get into the strengths of the team? Personally, my strengths, uh, I gotta, I'm not trying to be a narcissist, but I think my arm is definitely there. Uh, I've definitely improved in my running game. The past two games, I've uh, rushed for over 120 yards. Um, I think I'm going to be a really good dual threat this week as myself. So let's get into the strengths of the team and what you guys need to do to get the win this week against Hampshire. Um, we just got to come to play. We got to be ready. We're coming in every week dead. We're, we're, we're becoming scared. But as we move on and as we're growing, uh, we're coming in with more power. We're not as scared. We're ready to play. We want to get this win before the end of the season. Talked a little bit about it already with Coach Eddie as well as your uh, teammate and Luke. 0-7 start so far. How do you guys stay positive, keep focused, and have a positive end of the year? Uh, we just always tell ourselves, like, a win's possible. No one's in season is not what we want. Just like last year, we want to at least get a one, one win, two wins, three wins. We stay focused. We stay positive. I think if we can get a win this week, we can definitely bring it on to the next week. And after that, we just got to stay positive all week. All right, Aiden, anything else, man? That's it. Appreciate the time and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. This was our player interviews brought to you by the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Their phone number is 304-263-4343. You can stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue right here in Martinsburg. We'll be back for more of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. Right after this, you're tuned in to West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. WVU Medicine is pleased to introduce eight new providers who've joined University Health Associates East and our medical staffs at Berkeley Medical Center and Jefferson Medical Center. Physician's Assistant Casey Weeble, Emergency Medicine, Dr. Mark Seymour, Anesthesia, Dr. Farman Ali, Neurology, Dr. Christopher Redman, Rheumatology, Dr. Sierra Hart, Emergency Medicine, Physician's Assistant Carly Kremer, Cardiology, Nurse Practitioner Jennifer Gorgal, General Surgery, and Nurse Practitioner Corey Lapai, OBGYN. Welcome to WVU Medicine. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931.
I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. At Flea Motor Company off I-81 at 993 Hedgesville Road is a family-owned and operated business providing the eastern panhandle with the highest quality pre-owned vehicles and customer service since 1997. At Flea is a pre-owned Carfax Advantage dealer. We're proud to be your partner serving the community. You're local, we're local, so why not buy local? Call us at 304-267-7172 or see us at 993 Hedgesville Road. If you want to sell your car, we buy cars too. Check us out at Hefley.com. The Hefley Motor Company, a nice place to do business. Back to our final segment of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show from Morgan Field, home of the Berkeley Springs Indians, as they play host to the Hampshire Trojans. As we get into tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, representing accident injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com, and we'll start with the visiting Hampshire Trojans. Offensively, up front at left tackle, you have Keenan Chambers. Left guard is Malachi Goodwater. Your center is Bobby Spring. At right guard, it's Braxton Bill Meyer. And at right tackle, it's Carlos Chavez Trejo. In the backfield at quarterback is Landon Eversole. The running back is Xander Robinson and Brennan Brinker. At wide receiver, you have Jensen Fields, Andrew Lloyd, Aiden Blomquist, and Caleb Vandevander, Vandevander, excuse me. On the defensive side for Hampshire, it's Carlos Chavez Trejo up front, Braxton Bellmeyer, Wyatt Jenkins, and Blaine Bellmeyer. Your corners are Trevor Roof and Caleb Vandevander. Your linebackers are Brennan Brinker, Bobby Spring, Parker Kinzer, and Xander Robinson, and your safeties are Chex, Chase Rexroad and Jensen Fields. For Berkeley Springs, offensively, at left tackle, it's Brian Ayler. Left guards, Colton Hess. Centers, Landon Hellman. Right guards, Christian Norris. And at right tackle, it's Luke Purdy. Your quarterback is Aiden Kane. Your fullbacks, Connor Duval. Running backs, Jonah Kirk. Wide receivers are Jacob Sheiky, Kyle Moore, and Adam Rippin. Let's now get into our keys to the game, Dylan, as the key to your next car is brought to you by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of family, friends, pricing. Well, for Hampshire, I think the main thing is going to be to turn Aiden Kane into a passer. Not necessarily that he can't do it, but once you let a dual threat quarterback start using his legs, and you'll have to account for the arm and the rushing game from the quarterback becomes 11 on 11 instead of a you know 10 on 11 in the rushing game and becomes a lot more difficult for your defense. On the Berkeley Springs side of things, I think they need to make sure that they limit the mistakes, turnovers, and penalties. Make sure you can keep the game on your side, be able to run the ball, time of possession, keep it on your side, get those extra possessions for your offense. Like Kane, anyone else, put points up on the board. All right, that is it for our W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. We'll step aside, take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll get you set for kickoff between the Hampshire Trojans and the Berkeley Springs Indians. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV10. Back in two minutes. And that concludes today's pregame show. We play every play like it's the most important play of the game. Let's go. Coming up next, it's the starting lineups, opening kick, and play-by-play action of West Virginia high school football. Today's game is being brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, Modern Realty Results, Cody's Auto Body, The Palace Lounge, CMA Honda, Backdoor Jewelers, The Berkeley County Health Department, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Brown's Funeral Home and Cremations, Hagerstown Ford, the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm, the Mirius Group of Financial Advisors, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, the Hefley Motor Company, W. Harley Miller Systems, Smallwood and Small Insurance, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Auto Group, Ollie's VIP Lounge, and the Gary Kelly Allstate Insurance Agency. And now, let's go back to the field and rejoin our Talk Radio WRNR broadcast team. Where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. 
meat, corn, even the pie. <laughs> and then the Traeger does the rest, which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. We welcome you back to Morgan Field, home of the Berkeley Springs Indians, as both team captains for each team head out to midfield to shake hands and get you set for the coin toss. It is the visiting Hampshire Trojans in the black helmets with white stripe in the middle, white jerseys with black fonts on the front saying Hampshire, black letters on the front and back with black pants. For Berkeley Springs, it's the white helmet with the arrow head stripe down the middle and a Berkeley Springs Indian logo on each side. Gold uniforms for Berkeley Springs tonight with blue numbers on the front and back and blue pants. Captains for the Berkeley Springs Indians are number three Holden Gerson, number 54 Landon Hellman, number 17 Aiden Kane, and number two Connor Duval. It looks like the captains for the Hampshire Trojans, you have number 33, Xander Robinson out there, as well as number 11, Caleb Vandevander. Paul is tails. Your other captain for Hampshire is number two, Jensen Fields. And rounding out the captains for the Hampshire Trojans is number eight, Brennan Brinker. Colin McLaughlin here for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Alongside me is Dylan Bishop. Our cameraman's Daryl Miller. Back at the studio is Nick Versalini as we get ready for opening kickoff. Brought to you by CMA Honda of Winchester, located at 3985 Valley, pa Valley Pike. CMA moving lives forward. Good crowd here tonight as it's homecoming night for Berkeley Springs, who's seeking win number one of the season as it will be Berkeley Springs kicking off from left to right to Hampshire as the return team out there back to return. Looks like for Hampshire will be number Jensen four, Fields as well as Aiden Blumquist. On to kick off for Berkeley Springs is DJ Hinkle. Number six to kick off for the Indians. As he's waiting to get the football from the official. And he'll line it up about a few inches away from that left hash mark on the 40-yard line. Uh, Hinkle didn't actually start the season as a kickoff specialist. It was Axel Robles who will be doing the point after the point after touchdowns uh, after any scores uh, for the Indians. But Hinkle was able to wor work his way up into the roll as the season went on. Hinkle places the ball on the tee and will go back with the rest of his team lined up for a kickoff as it's Blumquist as well as Fields back at the 10-yard line to return. A high short end over end kick caught at the 25-yard line on the near side by Brennan Brinker. He'll dash up the numbers on the near sideline and he tackled just shy of the 40 at the 39-yard line. It'll be a first and 10 for Hampshire with 11.56 in this opening quarter of play. At their own as Landon Eversole will come out to lead the offense for Hampshire, the five foot eight hundred eighty pound sophomore. Hampshire breaks the huddle with first and ten, and they go with an interesting mix up here as it's Jensen Fields under center. Fields hands it off to a fullback who tries to run up the middle. And in on the tackle for Berkeley Springs was number 66 and number 53 as that is Norris and Purdy. Gain of one to make it second down and nine. It's interesting, Hampshire coming out in the uh, flex bone look. Didn't have 
Eversole in there at quarterback. Yep, it's Jensen Fields now leading the offense as they break the huddle. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Two men in the backfield. That is number 31 and number 8 as the handoff goes up the middle for Hampshire and just shy of the first down out across the 45. And that is Brennan Brinker in on the carry, a gain of six on the play to bring up third down and three with 11 minutes to go here in the opening quarter between Hampshire and Berkeley Springs. And Berkeley Springs coming out in the 3-4 defense. Kind of matches up pretty well with a flex bone look. You got those three down linemen in the middle, big guys up front. Then you get those two outside linebackers, two inside linebackers. It's a better run defense overall usually. Fields gets the snap. He hands it off to Brinker again. Brinker hesitates, tries to find space, goes forward, and will only gain two yards. He needed three, so that'll bring up a fourth down and one at the 48. He needs to get to the 49. It's decision time now for the Hampshire Trojans. Now it looks like they're going to keep the offense out there with 10-20 to go in this first quarter. Yeah, I think you go for it. This is kind of offense where you, you kind of understand you might get into more four-down territory more often than the traditional offense would. Sometimes you just know that you're only going to give it out three yards at a time. You might need four downs. Fields under center gets the snap. Will hand it off, lowering his shoulder and bursting through and having enough for the first down. Xander Robinson out across the 50 at Berkeley Springs, 49. That's a first down for Hampshire. Make it first and 10 with 9.55 to go in the first quarter. They just continue with fields. Yep, just able to break through there. I don't know if this was something that they realized it was just a strategic game plan sort of thing against Berkeley Springs defense to go to this offense, or if this was a necess uh, move out of necessity. Fields fakes the handoff to Brinker, and he hands it off to number 33. Robinson on the near side. Robinson off at the 20, 10, 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Hampshire, but hold everything. There's a flag back at the 30-yard line. As Hampshire starts to celebrate, but will slowly stop. So this one looks like it's getting called back. A holding against the Trojans. We'll call it back, negate the touchdown here with 9.25 to go in the first quarter. You know, who knows if holding even needed it to get to the end zone. But it's a wide receiver. It's tough for a wide receiver to hold a block for, for that long compared to an offensive lineman. It's just, you know... Not, not built for that. That's not what a wide receiver is meant to do. So it's, uh, sometimes it's tough for those guys out there to do it without holding for that long. So you still get a few yards because it was a big play. The holding was upfield with that being a wide receiver around the 30-yard line. They say it was at the 31, so that spots the ball at the 41 of Berkeley Springs. Keeps it a first down, and it will be a first down and a, about a three and a half, four yards to go. First and two. Jensen Fields, under center, gets the snap. Will hand it off to Robinson, and Robinson gets wrapped up but lowers his shoulder, keeps his leg churning, and has the first down at the 38-yard line. With 9.20 to go, it's another first down for Hampshire. First down, Trojans. First quarter still scoreless. This is much different from, from Hampshire than we really expected. They've, they've been throwing the ball a good bit this year. They have, you know, four wide receivers who are, you know, in upwards of 14 catches, 18, 19, 21 catches on the year. They, they, they throw the ball. Landon Eversold throw the ball 166 times for almost 1,000 yards so far this year. Eight touchdowns, six picks. Right. So this is a very big change of their offense. Right now, Eversold on the sideline, fields in under center. Gets the handoff, and again, hands it off, and this time it's to Brinker. Brinker bursts through the middle, out across the 30, just shy of the 25. Does he have the first Chase down? That'll be Chase close, and they give it to him. So a 10-yard gain will be another first down first for Hampshire, down who continues to just ground and pound here in the first quarter. Still nothing, nothing between Hampshire and Berkeley Springs with 8.30 to go in the first quarter. And it makes it tough for Berkeley Springs because the longer that these drives go, obviously the less time that their offense can get on the field and score some points. Let Aiden Kane run the ball around, throw the ball around the yard. Fields with Brinker and Robinson behind him. Gets the hand, takes the snap, hands it off to Robinson. Robinson goes to the right side, downfield. Tackled out across the 25 at the 22-yard line. That'll bring up a second down after a gain of four, make it a second down and six. Gain of five, second down. Jensen Fields gets the call from the far side of the field, goes into Hampshire's huddle. 
Interestingly enough, you haven't really seen much option out of this. This is a pretty traditional triple option f uh, formation that you'd see from the likes of the, the Naval and uh, the military academies. Fields fakes the handoff, runs out to the right, has the first down, that breaks through a tackle, goes through two, extends for the pile on, and they say his knee was down just shy of the goal line at the one-yard line. It's a first and goal for Hampshire. Gain of 21 on that run by Jensen Fields. And that might have been an option play, finally. Pull the ball out. I think the defensive end, he saw him kind of duck out there on the edge and attack the running back and he was able to pull it and he had the open field in front of him. 7.28 to go in the first quarter. Hampshire breaks the huddle. You have two receivers near side. Heavy bunch up front. Fields gets the snap. Halfback toss to Brinker to the left side. He goes towards the pylon and into the end zone. Touchdown Hampshire with 7.14 to go in the first quarter. It is the Hampshire Trojans on top of Berkeley Springs. Six to nothing. Trojans. <laughs> Got himself a good enough block from the wide receiver outside on the left side there. I think that was, I want to say it was Colton Fleming out there on that on that far side. Make that, that, not really a block, but got into the way of the defender just enough for him to be able to have the room to get into the end zone. Bryson Richardson on to attempt the extra point for Hampshire. As the snap is back, the kick is up. And that is through the uprights and good to make it 7 to nothing. Hampshire on top of Berkeley Springs with 7 minutes 11 seconds to go in the first quarter. Step aside, take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From peewee to the big boys to the wing tee formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for $12 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! Yeah. Omaha! Yeah. Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $12. Hello? We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? Bechdel Jewelers. Look. Can mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechdel Jewelers. Welcome back to Morgan Field. 7-0 Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs. It's Richardson on to kick off for Hampshire back to return for Berkeley Springs. is Jacob Sheiky. Kick from Richardson. Low end over end kick. That will be caught by Sheiky on the near side at the 10-yard line. Sheiky tries to slip through a tackle. Still keeps his feet going and pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A late flag or two thrown. And we'll wait to see what that is, Dylan. Flag on the field. I couldn't quite tell, but I, I mean, I would assume that's unsportsmanlike conduct late hit on someone. I think they're pointing in the direction of the Indians, though. Let's get our scoring drive summary while we wait for the penalty. Brought yep. to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Ten plays, 67 yards goes Hampshire, all running the ball. They've, they've gone traditional flex bone like Army or Navy here at Paul Johnson's Georgia Tech. And it's not what we expected, but, uh, you know. Hard to say if it's what Berkeley Springs expected either at that point. So it'll be first and ten for Berkeley Springs. Seven minutes, four seconds to go first in this down, first Indians. quarter. It's Hampshire seven, Berkeley Springs nothing. And Berkeley Springs will start off the drive at the 27-yard line. It's Aiden Kane alongside him to the left is Connor Duvall. Kane gets the snap, fakes the handoff to Duvall, and is going to keep it himself. Hampshire brings the pressure, though, and will tackle Kane for a loss in the backfield. And that's a loss of two on the play to bring up second down and 12. Ball on the 25. Yeah, that was a quarterback keeper all the way there. Quarterback bash, bringing the offensive guard around towards the quarterback where he's running, but the blocks just didn't get there. Hampshire got into the backfield pretty much immediately. There's nowhere for Kane to go. Berkeley Springs breaks the huddle with 6.35 to go in the first quarter. Shotgun formation for Kane. Duval to his right, two receivers to each side. 
Second down and 12. Kane gets the snap, looks to the far side, and a pass at the feet of his intended receiver falls incomplete as that pass intended for Jonah Kirk and some miscommunication there as Kirk had the go route, never turned around and saw the ball. Yeah, it's hard to know without knowing the play call whose fault that was, but Kane certainly thought that that was going to be probably a, a turnaround there and a curl route or at the very least a slant, and he just never really turned around. Kind of ran more of a post than a slant. Third down and 12, three receivers to the far side, one to the near side for Barkley Springs, as Kane now sends a man in motion. Everybody bunched on the far side, and the three receivers in the hash mark now Lane flag, field. and it's a false start against the Indians to back him up five yards, and that'll make the it a third down and 17 at the 20-yard line of the Still Indians. And already, 20 penalty yards before you've even run your third offensive play. That's, I mean, I said that was one of the keys for them. Was really, the key for them was to limit the mistakes. Man in motion from left to right. Kane gets the snap. Play action pass looking deep. Has a man wide open on the near side, and it's caught at the 45. And he's going to be brought down as that's Kyle Moore out across the 50. That's a big game for Berkeley Springs to make it first and 10. And a late flag thrown around the 38-yard line. I think this is going against Hampshire. And Moore was wide open from the start, blown blown covered somewhere along the way. So if they fell for the play action snap, but there's just not a safety back there. It's a personal foul against Berkeley Springs. Oh, against the Indians. And that they yell out the personal foul against Remington Sites. Just Killing themselves with penalties already. And you're already in a tough situation. But I, I do th think from what they're setting things up, you get the first down. Yeah, but still a first down yeah. for Berkeley Springs, who breaks the huddle. However, instead of it being in Hampshire territory, they have the ball at their own 36. Snap back to Kane, and whistle blows. It's another false start against the Indians to back them up and make it a first down and 15. Already 40 penalty yards. You can't have that in one drive, and you're not even you're not even past midfield. You're not even at the 40 yard line. You're making it so tough on your offense to play behind the chains like this, where you have to get you know 10, 15 yards at a time. There was third and 17 because of penalties. First and 15, the snap. The Kane he Number hands it off to his running back, Kane. Connor Duvall. Duvall tries to go up the middle, but doesn't have much of a push from his offensive line. He's still able to pick up two yards. That'll bring up a second down and 13. Ball just shy of the 35 at the 34-yard line. Kane breaks the huddle, calling out the play to his teammates. Interesting formation here. You got three receivers trying to go to the far side. Now they bring one back. That's Adam Rippon to the near side. He'll be the lone receiver. Rippon's a big wide receiver. Snap back to Kane. Drops back, looks to the far side. It's a screen pass that is caught at the 40, and he's off to the races at the 40 on the other side of Hampshire's field. That's Jacob Sheiky at the 20. 10, 5. Is he in? Just and they short. say he's just short. At the one-yard line, but what a big play on the wide receiver bubble screen for Jacob Cheeky and Aiden Kane to make it first and goal, Berkeley Springs, at the Hampshire one-yard line. Well, he got a great block from his wide receiver as edge and then just used his acceleration and speed to get past the third level of the Hampshire defense and just barely didn't have the... Uh, the endurance, the, the top end speed to outrun Hampshire's DBs. But here you go, best best chance you can get here at scoring. Now Berkeley Springs goes in that wishbone formation. Kane keeps it himself, tries to push up the middle, breaks through a tackle and into the end zone. Touchdown Berkeley Springs with four minutes and 30 seconds to go. It's now Hampshire seven, Berkeley Springs six on the one yard quarterback sneak by Aiden Kane, his first touchdown of the night. Hampshire did not put up a lot of resistance there right by the A-gap when you should know that a quarterback sneak could be coming. It, it, Kane was able to just kind of walk into the end zone almost. 
he got stood up for a second, but he didn't even have to like crouch down or anything. Axel Robles on to attempt the extra point as the kick is up. And it might have been deflected. It's wide to left. No good. And that'll keep the score. Hampshire 7, Berkeley Springs 6. We'll step aside and take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. WB Medicine is pleased to introduce eight new providers who've joined University Health Associates East and our medical staffs at Berkeley Medical Center and Jefferson Medical Center. Physician's Assistant Casey Weeble, Emergency Medicine, Dr. Mark Seymour, Anesthesia, Dr. Farman Ali, Neurology, Dr. Christopher Redman, Rheumatology, Dr. Sierra Hart, Emergency Medicine, Physician's Assistant Carly Kremer, Cardiology, Nurse Practitioner Jennifer Gorgal, General Surgery, and Nurse Practitioner Corey Lapai, OBGYN. Welcome to WBU Medicine. Welcome back. Four minutes, 30 seconds to go in our opening quarter between Hampshire and Berkeley Springs. It's now 7-6. to six. Hampshire still leads after the missed point after attempt by Axel Robles for Berkeley Springs as it's DJ Hankel on to kick off for the Indians. Back to return for Hampshire is Brinker and Fields. It's a pooch kick to the near side. That'll bounce at the 30 and be bobbled. Falling down on top of it, though, is Brennan Brinker. And that almost looked like it could have been just recovered by Berkeley Springs. Nearly. Spring Drive Summary brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Berkeley Springs goes five plays. They, they get that 63-yard screen pass to Sheiky, and then the one-yard quarterback sneak by Kane. Kind of hard to uh, calculate how many yards that drive was. I believe it was about 75, but the penalties, it was you know coming back and forth. First and 10, Hampshire. Fields gets the snap, hands it off to Xander Robinson. Robinson pushes forward through the trenches, out across the 30 at the 32-yard line. He'll be brought down for a gain of four to bring up a second down and six with 4.14 to go and the clock winding down in this first quarter. Robinson's been running the ball well. Five carries already over 30 yards. Hampshire's offensive line's getting a pretty good push up front. Hampshire breaks the huddle. Again, it's Jensen Fields under center. In a wishbone formation, one receiver to each side. He gets the snap. Hands it off to Brinker. Brinker sees space up the middle now. Spins around through a tackler out across the 40. Has enough for the first down and will be tackled at the 42. So again, a 10 by Brennan Brinker. Makes it first and 10 Hampshire with 3.45 to go in the first quarter. Hampshire 7, Berkeley Springs 6. The Berkeley Springs linebackers need to do a better job of getting to the ball. You only have three guys up on front in the defensive line that are going up against usually six, seven blockers, maybe even eight, depending on if the quarterback keeps it or not. Those linebackers need to get to the ball. Fields hands it off to Brinker again, and he has a big hole up the middle, slips through a tackle out across into Berkeley Springs territory. It's going to be wrapped around and brought down at the 45, and that's another Hampshire first down. I was talking about how well Robinson was doing running the ball. Brinker, I believe, is coming up on 40 yards already on just seven carries. First and 10 Hampshire at Berkeley Springs 45 yard line. The Trojans break the huddle. It's the senior fields under center. He has one receiver to each side. Brinker and Robinson behind him in the backfield. He hands it off to Robinson. Berkeley Springs brings the blitz this time. It's a tackle for a loss as in making the tackle was Adam Rippon. And that they say the forward progress for Robinson got him back to the line of scrimmage, but it will make it a second down and 10 with 2.35 to go in the first quarter. Him and Christian Norris also got in there. That's what you need. Like I said, you've only got those three guys up there on the defensive front before you start getting to your linebackers and your edge rushers off the front. And there was Rippin that time coming off the edge, able to get a hand on the, on the ball carrier, and then also Norris coming through and penetrating through the defensive line. 
Fields looks right, now looks left to his receivers. Gets the snap, play action pass. He rolls out to his right, looking downfield. Has a man, it's Robinson underneath. Makes the catch and has the first down on the far sideline at the 30 at the 25. He's tripped up at the 25-yard line. That's another Hampshire first down with 2.03 to go in the first quarter. At the 25-yard line of Berkeley Springs. Your first quarter presented on TV10 by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing, as well as Brown Funeral Home and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons. Full-service funeral home that's family-owned in Martinsburg and Wood in Charlestown. Ranson, proudly serving the area since 1880. Hampshire breaks the huddle. One receiver to each side of Fields. Wes Robinson and Brinker in the backfield. Fields gets the snap, hands it off to Robinson. No, he actually fakes it, keeps it himself, runs out to the right, follows his blockers, and he's right at the chain, pushed out of bounds on the far side at the 15. We'll see if he was able to get the first down or if they say he stepped out, it looks like. That's first down, Trojans. They do give him the first down at the 15, so 132 to go in this first quarter. It's Hampshire 7, Berkeley Springs 6. First and 10 inside the end zone now, Dylan. He faked out a good bit of the Berkeley Springs defense there up the middle, including really both of us. <laughs> I think we all kind of thought that the running back had the ball there, and all of a sudden he, he realized that he didn't. Fields bobbles the snap. Uh-oh. Ball's on the ground, and it looks it. like he might have fell right back on top of it. I think so. Yep. Missed exchange there between ball, 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 ball. him and the center, <laughs> Shane two, Shepard. Andrew. But Fields was able to fall on top of it. And that makes it second down. The ball was at the line of scrimmage as he was under center and just bobbled that snap. So second down and 10 at the 15-yard line. Under a minute to go in the first quarter. Clock winding down. It's at 50 seconds as Hampshire breaks the huddle. Two receivers to the near side, none to the far side. Fields looks to the left, now goes under center, gets the handoff, halfback toss to Brinker, and Brinker should easily be able to get in the end zone. He does, but there's two flags thrown around the 10-yard line. That play was close to being busted open by Adam Rippon. I wasn't sure if you were looking at that, but he actually read that it was going to be a halfback toss for Berkeley Springs. He read it well, and it's the second time Hampshire's run that play. He watched Brinker, I think, that time. Read it all the way, but didn't quite get there. Holding penalty called against Hampshire, so that'll take them outside of the red zone now. Spot the ball at the 21-yard line of Berkeley Springs. Make it a second down and long. So they need to get to the five-yard line. So second down and 16 with 34 seconds to go in this first quarter of play. Fields takes the snap, rolls out to his right. And he shuffle passes it behind him to Brinker. Brinker lowers his shoulder, but is wrapped up on the far sideline out across the 25. They say to roll the clock down as they spot the ball on the right side hash marks. It looks like at the 23-yard line, bring up a third down and seven. Let's see if Hampshire runs a play or if this will be the end of the first quarter or not as they're still in the huddle with five seconds to go. Yep. And I it. think they're going to decide to just let this one end. So at the end of quarter number one, it is Hampshire 7, Berkeley Springs 6. We'll step aside, take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10, back in one minute. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family. And we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. At the Berkeley County Health Department, our motto is prevent, promote, protect. Since 1935, our mission has been to provide clinical and environmental services to protect the health of the general public. We're committed to building public health in our community by offering a wide range of services, including blood pressure screening, breast and cervical screening, family planning, counseling, lab testing, and more. We perform health inspections to make sure the restaurants you visit are clean, and we prepare and coordinate plans to respond to all hazards. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court, Martinsburg. Welcome back to Morgan Field in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia on homecoming night for the Berkeley Springs Indians. They trail Hampshire 7-6 to six as we get ready for quarter number two. Hampshire with the ball. It is a third down and eight 
at the Berkeley Springs 14-yard line. It's Jensen Fields under center as he's been so far all game long, typically a wide receiver. It's the usual quarterback. Landon Eversole has yet to come in for Hampshire. Fields gets the snap, fakes the halfback toss, now rolls out to his left as he feels pressure, goes up the middle, in between two defensive Berkeley Springs Indians, and into the end zone for Hampshire. Touchdown Trojans with 11.51 to go in the second quarter to make it now 13-6 as the senior extends that play and goes in for six. I, the Indians' defense just was not ready for the running back, the quarterback to take off and, and run with the ball there. I mean, they, they started to get there, but uh, Fields was just faster. And there was not enough you know, change of direction and just awareness from, from the linebackers. High that snap. Time. The extra point is and up point and is through good. the uprights and good by Bryson Richardson to make it 14-6 to six here with 11.51 to go in the second quarter. Let's step aside and take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Locust Hill Golf Course invites you to historic Charlestown, West Virginia for 18 holes of phenomenal golf. We're just an hour drive from the Baltimore, D.C. Beltway and one half hour drive from Winchester and Leesburg, Virginia, as well as Hagerstown and Frederick, Maryland. Each tee offers challenges across the 35 acres of lakes, ponds, and streams, which come into play on 11 holes. The Blue Ridge Mountains also provide a breathtaking backdrop to Locust Hill. Schedule your tee time today at www.locusthillgolfcourse.com or call 304-728-7300. We welcome you back here to Morgan Field. Score now, Hampshire 14, Berkeley Springs 6 with 11.51 to go in the second quarter as it's Bryson Richardson on to kick off for Hampshire. Back to return is Jacob Sheiky for the Indians. The kick, a booming kick that it will go over the head of Sheiky and roll its way into the end zone for a touchback. Bigfoot. Richardson. So we'll see what Kane can do. And the rest of the, the Berkeley Springs offense coming back on the other side. Uh, I think, you know, this, they're coming off of a, a seven-play, 68-yard touchdown drive there by Hampshire. Where Hampshire, again, ran the ball really well. You know, they, they, the Indians were able to get them in the third and eight, which is where you want to put a team that's running the flex bone, but it just weren't able to contain fields on that 14-yard touchdown run. Scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. First and 10 for Berkeley Springs at the 20-yard line after the touchback on the kickoff. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side for Kane. He sends a man in motion from right to left to jet sweep. That's going to be handed off from Kane, I believe, to Shiki Shiki. Tries to cut at the left hash marks and go downfield, but he's going to be ramped up at the 23-yard line. So that a gain of three for Sheiky makes it second down and seven. Bill Meyer in on the stop for Hampshire. This is kind of what we've seen from Berkeley Springs over the last few years, this sort of spread attack. Sometimes they run the ball more, sometimes they pass the ball more. depends on you know, the personnel, but... What we're used to seeing from Kane drops back to pass, looks to the near side as a man open. It's Kyle caught by Kyle Moore on the near sideline. Turns around, tries to go upfield, and that only a gain of two as he's out across the 25 at the 26. So that'll make it a third down and four. It's the forward progress they say he gained three yards with. Ten minutes, 50 seconds to go before halftime. It's Hampshire 14, Berkeley Springs 6. Kane jogs back into the huddle for Berkeley Springs as they break the huddle now. You have two receivers on the far side, one on the near side as they now send one from right to left to have two on the near side, one on the far side. 
Keenan in the backfield with Duvall to his right. Fakes the handoff to Duvall. Will keep it himself. Keenan goes up the middle now. Has a burst of speed on the near side. Out across the 35. Pushed out of bounds just shy at the 40. Pushing him out of bounds was Aiden Blumquist. But that is a first down for Berkeley Springs with 10.22 to go in the second quarter. And that's the danger that Aiden Kane brings to the offensive game plan. Can't just throw the ball. He can run the ball as well. He's fast. Fast just like his brother. He was also number 17, Tobin Whittington, back in the day. Back in our day, Colin. That's true. <laughs> as Berkeley Springs breaks the huddle, it is first and 10 at the 40-yard line of Berkeley Springs for Kane. Two receivers to each side. He gets the snap. Fakes the handoff to Duval, and it's a poor read option as everybody, it seems like, for Hampshire wrapping up Kane and breaking him down for a loss as that was Bill Meyer first in to make the stop as well as Blumquist. A loss, it looks like, of five on the play will bring up second down and 15. They just brought the blitz that time. I think they kind of expected the, the run there. Which, you know, when that's your your biggest weapon, your best player on your offense, you'll go to it over and over, but you can't get predictable. Second down, snap back to Kane. He rolls out to his right, looking downfield as a pass. It's caught by Sheiky at the 45. He goes backwards now over to the far side. He's dragging the defender who eventually gets him out of bounds. As that was Caleb Vandevander pushing him out eventually at the... 47-yard line of Berkeley three, Springs. That brings up a third down and three as they need to get to the 50. Kane's already over 100 yards passing. There's one incompletion. He's thrown four straight completions after the first one was incomplete. I don't think we can for sure call that incompletion his fault either. It looked like the wide receiver might have run the wrong route. 9.28 to go. Third down and three here in the second quarter for Berkeley Springs, who trails Hampshire 14-6. High snap to Kane. He keeps it himself. Tries to go up the middle. Now bounces to the right side. Lowers his shoulder. Out across the 50. Has the first down. And he's brought down at the 49-yard line. Van Devander in on the stop again for Hampshire. But that is another first down for Berkeley Springs. Now with 9.18 to go in the first quarter. Good shiftiness there from Kane. Got his blocks too. Stayed patient behind the offensive line. Let the blocks develop. And they got it done. Berkeley Springs offense now in Hampshire territory, just barely. Ball at the 48-yard line. Kane with two receivers to each side gets the snap, dropping back the pass, fires a dart on the near side, and it's bobbled but caught on the near side, and he loses the ball. Hampshire recovers at the 33-yard line as that was caught by Jonah Kirk, but recovered by the Hampshire Trojans in to make the recovery for Hampshire was Aiden Whitaker. I hate to see that because they were moving the ball down the field. That's that's why, you know, the Indians have some weapons that they can get down the field and score some points. You just have to not turn the ball over. Don't have penalties that put you behind the sticks and make it harder for yourself. So that makes it a first and ten for the Hampshire Trojans at their, looks like, 34-yard line. Jensen Fields again. Back out at quarterback as he goes underneath his center. Two tailbacks behind him to the left and right. Gets the snap. He rolls out, looking to pass. Chucks it deep, has a man wide open. It's Breaker on the far side. Caught at the Berkeley Springs 45. And there goes Breaker down the far sideline and into the end zone. Touchdown, Hampshire, with 8.39 to go in quarter number two. It is now 20-6. to six. The Trojans lead the Berkeley Springs Indians. Just wide open. I think by the time, I, I want to say it was Isaiah Hutchinson, realized that Brinker was running past him. It was already too late. The wheel route out of the backfield. I mean, it's a good play to run. It, it breaks from your tendencies. You're expecting them to run the ball, and when they have passed the ball, rolled out to the right, they've thrown the ball to the right, or they've run it to the right with the quarterback. Low snap, the extra point kick is up, and that is good from Bryson Richardson to now make it 21-6 to with 8.38 to go in the second quarter. Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs. We'll step aside and take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV10. 
This is Eric at Hancock Chevrolet. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hancock Chevrolet, it is that easy. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a new or used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hancock Chevrolet will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. Why waste your time in a car dealership playing the dumb back and forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Cumberland to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hancock Chevrolet absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HancockChevy.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want, and your new ride will be delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Welcome back. 8.38 to go in quarter number two. Hampshire leads 21-6 over Berkeley Springs as it's Bryson Richardson on to kick off. For Hampshire, back to return is Jacob Sheiky as we wait for a kicking ball to be recovered as here at Berkeley Springs. There's only a fence and then a parking lot to the high school building. So that went over that fence into the parking lot and now being retrieved and brought back to the kicker, Bryson Richardson. who can now place the ball on that green kicking tee at the 40-yard line. Richardson ready to kick off. His last kick rolled into the end zone for a touchback. Richardson raises his right hand, now runs forward. He sends another kick end over end, and this one will be returnable. Caught at the 10-yard line by Sheiky, and Sheiky tries to go up the middle. Doesn't have many blockers. He gets blown up at the 24-yard line, and he's a little slow to get up. Hopefully he'll be okay as... Let's get our scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. It's a short one. One play, 66-yard drive for the for the Trojans. 66-yard touchdown pass to, to Brinker. First and 10 for Berkeley Springs, who trails Hampshire now 21-6. to six. So the, the issue now for the Berkeley Springs defense is that you've now – let the Trojans score on two straight passing plays. This is an offense designed to run the ball. Things can really start to snowball if you really have to account for the passing game as well uh, being just as dangerous. Kane in shotgun formation. This is running back Duval to his right. Sends a man in motion. It's a gent sweep into the gut Chase of number 22, Yankowski. Chase Yankowski. And Yankowski gets a hit to the helmet. No flag thrown. As he's out on that far side on the Jet sweep at the 25-yard line, so a gain of just one yard on that will bring up second down and nine. Yeah, I, it looked like he was definitely hit up towards the helmet. I think it was you know, kind of the way that he was he was tackled by one guy, brought down, and hit by the other. It was a close one. Second down and nine, 7.54 to go in this second quarter. Three receivers to the near side of the field, one to the far side for Berkeley Springs. Kane gets the snap, dropping back, looking to pass, steps up in the pocket as a man in the middle of the field. He got there early. Incomplete. It's that pass intended for Kyle Moore. And Dylan, you're saying that the corner might have got there a little bit early, but no flag thrown. I think that's pass interference. I think he got there just, the, it was only a slight quarter second, half second before the ball reached the wide receiver, but it was early. It got, it got, it disrupted his ability to catch the ball. It makes it a third down and nine at Berkeley Springs' 25-yard line. Berkeley Springs breaks the huddle. It's Kane. Duval lined up to his right. He has one lone receiver on the far side, three to the near side. Kane sends a man in motion to Cheeky. Play action pass. He drops back as a man deep. On the far side, it's intended for Moore. Moore goes up and makes the catch at the 40-yard line of Hampshire. What a play as he jumps over the corner and snags it right off the helmet of Andrew Loy. And that of, I believe, 25 makes it first and 10. Berkeley Springs at the 40-yard line of Hampshire. It's a gain of 35. Even. 35, thank you for correcting my math, Dylan. Kyle Moore, he mossed him. 
And I think Moore might have gotten hurt on the landing that he's coming off the field. But, wow, what a catch. And a great throw by Kane. There was not a huge window to throw that ball into. He was, you know, the corner was pretty much in lockstep with Moore. There was not really any separation. Moore, only a freshman at Berkeley Springs, is now the Indians will take their first time out. Seven minutes, 36 seconds to go in quarter number two. It's Hampshire 21, Berkeley Springs 6. We'll step aside and only take a 30-second break, Nick. Back in the studio, 30-second break. This is West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. by the freshman for the Indian. It's Hampshire 21, Berkeley Springs 6. Indian ball as Frank Noddle, two receivers to each side for Kane. He gets the snap, fakes the handoff. It's a read option. He keeps it himself, now runs to the near side at the 40. And he goes out across the 40 before being tripped up as Braden Brinker in to make the stop as well as Aiden Blumquist. It goes from the 40 to the 42, so a gain of two on the play will bring up second down and eight. But Kane hasn't gotten a ton going in the run game so far. Had a, had a rush of 14 yards earlier, had the one-yard quarterback sneak for a touchdown. But otherwise, he's been, going to, he's been doing it through the air. He already has over 150 passing yards on the night. Second down and eight for Berkeley Springs. Kane... As his running back Duval to his left. Shotgun formation, the snap back to Kane. He drops back, has a man coming through. Now passes it on the near side, and that's caught by Adam Ripien. Down the near sideline, he's pushed out of bounds at the 13-yard line. That looked like it was going to get blown up in the backfield as the linebacker came through the middle untouched. And Kane, though, able to slip past him, roll out to the left, and saw Ripien wide open, Dylan. That's exactly how an out-of-structure, out-of-system play should end up between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Kane keeps his eyes down the field. Rippon finds the room, finds the open space in the zone to get himself open. Kane finds his man. Kane's been great through the air so far. First and 10 at Hampshire's 12-yard line for Berkeley Springs. Kane gets the snap, rolls out to his right. Passes it over the intended receiver, excuse me, as that intended for Jacob Sheiky. That'll bring up a second down and ten. As I say that, he only he throws his third incompletion. But it, listen, it was it was a tight window, you know, it, it, on the run. But it's a completable pass. Should have made the play. There was enough separation for Sheiky. Second down and ten as Berkeley Springs breaks the huddle ball. At Hampshire's 12-yard line with 6 minutes, 12 seconds to go. It's Hampshire 21, Berkeley Springs 6. We're in the second quarter. Snap back from Helming to Kane. Fires a dart up the middle, and it's snagged by the big receiver, Adam Rippon. Rippon tries to keep churning and get into the end zone, but two Hampshire Trojans push back, and he's brought down at the half-yard line. That brings up. Man, if Rippon just reaches the ball out, he's got a touchdown. But down at the one instead. Laser of a throw by Kane. He said in the pregame interview he feels like his strength is that arm as another quarterback sneak for Kane. He goes up the middle, spins around and into the end zone. Touchdown, Berkeley Springs. 5.47 to go in quarter number two to make it Hampshire 21, Berkeley Springs 12. And the extra point unit will come out for the Indians. That's his second point. Both on quarterback sneaks. Yeah, but it's been a result of getting the ball down to the goal line, passing the ball. It's been really the passing game so far that's worked for the Indians. High snap, 
The extra point attempt is up by Axel Robles, and that one splits the uprights. It's good to make it 21-13 with 5.47 to go in the second quarter. Step aside, take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV10. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. The Honda Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot are in a league of their own when it comes to rugged capability. Their relentless power and versatility make these vehicles the ultimate challengers for exhilarating adventures and formidable terrain. But it's not just performance that makes these cars special. It's the unwavering determination that inspires everything we do. That's why we're KBB.com's best value brand of 2023. CMA's Honda of Winchester 3985 Valley Pike. CMA's moving lives forward. Available all-wheel drive on Pilot based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Back here at Morgan Field in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. 21-13 now. Hampshire up by eight on Berkeley Springs on homecoming night as DJ Hinkle gets set to kick off to Hampshire. It's a end over end kick that'll be caught and bobbled now. Trying to pick it up is number eight for Hampshire. Who goes down the far side. That is Brennan Brinker. Lost the ball. And he lost the ball yeah, again. But I, I I think they're saying he's down. I believe you were correct, even though that was recovered by Casey Berkeley Kelsey Springs. Cheeky, they say the Brinker was down. Let's get our scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Seven plays, 77 yards go the Tribe on that one, mostly through the air. Completions of 35, 27, and 11 yards on that drive. So most... Most of the yards, all but two, coming through the air. Jensen Fields under center, gets the snap, hands it off to his tailback, and that is Xander Robinson. And Robinson is trying to get brought back by a defensive lineman at Berkeley Springs, but he just keeps his feet moving, gets some help from a teammate, and just shy of the 40-yard line goes Robinson at the 39-yard line. So that first run here of the drive for Hampshire is a gain of, it looks like, seven on the play. Bring up second down. You're asking a lot of three guys, three down linemen, against the flex bone or a wishbone offense. Fields hands it off to Brinker this time, and Brinker goes up the middle. Will be stopped just shy of the yard, the gain. Bring up now third down and one. And I'm not sure how much they practiced it, but at some point if you're Berkeley Springs, do you go to something, you know, with more more than three down linemen to try to counter this attack, whether it be a 5-2, even a 46 defense, you know, something along those lines. Fields crouches down under center, gets the snap, hands it off to Robinson. Robinson met right at the line of scrimmage, but he's able to get the first down, a gain of two. He stops at the 45-yard line of Hampshire. First and 10 for the Trojans with four minutes, 19 seconds to go in quarter number two. Clock winds down. Looks like we have an injured Berkeley Springs player. And he's trying to wave off his coaches saying, I want to stay on the field, but the officials are going to force him to go out for at least one play, as that's Isaiah Hutchinson. Yeah, clearly pretty hobbled as Sheiky comes on the field for him at safety. Fields with the first and 10 for Hampshire at the 45. Gets the snap, hands it off to Brinker. Brinker almost lost the ball, but he was able to keep it tucked in and will be stopped just shy at the 50, a gain of, it looks like, three at the 48-yard line. He goes, bring up second down and seven. 3.40 to go in this second quarter. Clock winding down, and Hampshire right now run heavy. They can pass the ball, we've seen, but getting close to potentially needing to here before halftime. Yeah, this, this is the spot that they want to be in. They had over five minutes coming into this drive. Uh, they're 
last one, before the one play drive, was about five or so minutes to get into the end zone. Fields looks behind him after getting the snap and hands it off to Xander Robinson. Robinson goes up the middle, bringing him down. Eventually was Landon Hellman for Berkeley Springs. They say forward progress. Stopped Robinson at the 47-yard line of Berkeley Springs to bring up a third down and three. So a gain of four on that carry by Robinson. Mentioned that the linebackers for Berkeley Springs needed to step up. So far, Landon Hellman's been doing that. It feels like pretty much... (laughs) <laughs> on this drive and even the last one that every time uh, the tackle is made by Hellman. 2.40 to go, third down and three here in the second quarter. Fields gets the snap play action pass. He rolls out to his right, looking downfield, floats a pass to Robinson on the near sideline. It's brought in at the 30. Robinson down the near sideline will be brought down at the 27-yard line, but a flag thrown around the line of scrimmage it looks like. I and think it there's like 12 men on the be, field. I thought maybe it was an ineligible. Or ineligible. Yep. Looks yeah. like that's an ineligible man downfield against, against Hampshire, so that negates the play that would have been a first down for Hampshire. It sure would have been. And backs them up. Yeah, Berkeley Springs just lost the, the, the receiver in the flats that time. It was Robinson. Same play that was successful for Hampshire earlier. But they get bailed out by the penalty. So that makes it third down and nine, 229 left in quarter number two. It's Hampshire 21, Berkeley Springs 13. Ball now spotted at Hampshire's 47-yard line. Now you're starting to get into territory where it's going to be tough to get the ball down the field at the rate that you've been doing it and score in two minutes. Fields takes the snap, drops back, looking to pass. As a man wide open downfield, chucks it, but it's underthrown and through the hands of the intended receiver and falls incomplete as that pass intended for Colton Fleming. And that will bring up a fourth down and nine. I, I thought Chase Yakowski was about to just run into a blatant defensive pass interference penalty, but he held up exactly like you should. The receiver was slowed down, uh, slowed down. It was underthrown. Fields going for it. Chucks it as a man deep. And it incomplete through the hands of the receiver on the far side, Blaine Billmeyer, as they kind of made it look like they were going to pooch punch it, Dylan. Had Fields in the backfield. Three down linemen. Three receivers to the near side. Three to the far side. Goes to the far side, but through the hands and now Berkeley Springs gets the ball back, down 21-13, to 13, with a minute 55 to go in the second quarter, in terrific field position at Hampshire's 47-yard line, and Berkeley Springs gets the ball to start half number two. Absolutely, and this has been an offense that can move the ball down the field in just two minutes, especially starting in Hampshire territory. Kane in shotgun formation, two receivers to each side, gets the snap, dropping back the pass, steps up in the pocket, feels pressure now, and he's sacked as bringing him down was Hampshire. Wyatt Jenkins in on the sack. That brings up second down and long as it looked like at first he was able to slip past Jenkins, but Jenkins just grabs the jersey of Kane and throws him down. As Berkeley Springs calls the timeout, they all have one remaining. Let's get our second quarter sponsors in now during this timeout as the second quarter brought to you by Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. Go to HagerstownFord.com as well as Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. I think it was a four verticals type of play there, so Hampshire kind of had it red and covered so there wasn't really anywhere for Kane to go with the ball and the offensive line blocking just didn't quite hold up enough for Kane to be able to maneuver in the pocket and you know roll out make a play with his legs whether it be finding that extra time like he did the ripping on the last drive or just take off and run for yards himself it was a good play made for the sack also Scoreboard has it as second down and 20. Minute 41 to go in quarter number two. Hampshire 21, Berkeley Springs 13. Oh, more like 17. 
Snap the cane. He hands it off to Duval. He hands it off to Shiki. Shiki goes up the middle on the trick play. Out across the 45. Tackle just shy of the 40. Looks like at the 42 yard line, and Shiki's hurt. After that one, he went down hard. And he's still down. So the training staff will go out. That's a potential big loss for Berkeley Springs. So this will be a third down and five as Shiki. Hopefully we'll be okay. Both teams go to their sidelines. And let's step aside just for now, back of the studio, make it a 30-second break, Nick, for the injured player. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. We're back in 30 seconds. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. We welcome you back to Morgan Field, the injured Indian, Jacob Sheiky, being helped off on the near sideline now. Walking under his own power, which is a positive sign. Both teams go back out onto the field. It is a third down for Berkeley Springs. Six yards to go. Ball at Hampshire's 42-yard line with a minute 26 to go in quarter number two. Kane sends a man in motion from right to left. Play action pass, and he's going to decide to try to keep it himself and go up the middle. And just grabbing his jersey and slinging him down was Hampshire's big lineman, it looks like, number 76, Braxton Billmeyer. And now Hampshire will call a timeout to stop the clock at a minute 13 as Kane was just shy of a first down to bring up now fourth down. And it would be fourth and one for Berkeley Springs, who right now I think is going to go for it. I think you have to, even though you get the ball to start the half. You want to try to get some momentum going into the locker room. It's only one yard. You can't, if your offensive line you can hold up their blocks, you can get a yard. And you go with the quarterback sneak. It has worked for you so far down at the goal line. You've been able to push through. Aiden Kane's really had no resistance getting into the end zone on those sneak plays, even though they ran it twice. You would think the second time around, Hampshire would see it coming and provide more the resistance, table but they haven't. At the end of the bleachers, now, maybe that there's a timeout right before the play. The coaches are really getting into the ears of the players and say, watch for it, and really get into the A-gap between the center and the guard. That's where the quarterback would go, but they're going in the shotgun for the play. Kane in shotgun formation as Duval to his left. Three receivers near side, one to the far side. Fourth down and one. The snap to Kane. Fakes the handoff to Duval. Kane, runs Kane, up the middle. Has the first down out across the 35. Tripped Number up at the 33-yard line. First Bring down, Berkeley Springs. Clock stops with a minute, that eight seconds to go before the ball is spotted. And now it starts to run back down. 21-13, it's Hampshire on top of Berkeley Springs in quarter number two. Berkeley Springs will get the ball to start quarter number three after halftime. Got to speed things up here if they want to make this one a closer game at the half. Kane sends a man in motion from right to left. It's a jet sweep, and now a trick play. Deep open. shot by Kyle Moore, and it falls incomplete. He just underthrew Aiden Kane. Berkeley Springs, though, pulling out all the stops on us tonight, Dylan, for homecoming. With that pass. It looked like it hit him in the hands. It it was a little underthrown, a little to the right. He didn't lead the receiver. Kane had to spin around to the other side to his back shoulder and try to reach out for it. The ball did hang up in the air that if Kane would have gotten his head around a little sooner, he might have been able to slow down and, and make the play, but he was trying to sprint down the field towards the goal line. Second down and 10. Again, they said Yakowski in motion. Play action pass for Kane. He has a man on the far side, but it's picked off by Hampshire on the far sideline. Down the far sideline he goes at the 40. Stutter steps, jumps back, and now back down the far sideline as blockers in front of him at Berkeley Springs 40. 30, 20, 10, 5. 
pick six touchdown for the Hampshire Trojans with 22 seconds to go in the quarter to make it now 27-13. And that is heartbreaking for Berkeley Springs. That it worked out pretty well for Berkeley Springs so far, once or twice down the field. The motion, the fake jet sweep, got wide receivers running vertical routes down the field. It looked like he was uh, had his receiver open over there, but I think the safety was just a little too close. It was kind of the illusion of an open receiver with how far down the field he was. He had to put some... Uh, some oomph behind the pass to get it down there in time. Just it, it was a tough throw to try to make. One that you have to try to make in that situation. Low snap. Though. The extra point kick from Richardson is up. Extra and that is good eight, after the pick six 13. by Caleb Vandevander. you got to tackle better on it. 28-13. Hampshire now with 22 seconds to go in quarter number two. We'll step aside, take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Back at Morgan Field, 28-13. Hampshire now on top of Berkeley Springs after the Caleb Vandevander pick six for Hampshire. 22 seconds to go in quarter number two. It's Bryson Richardson to kick off for the Trojans. Back to return for the Berkeley Springs Indians. This is Jacob Sheiky. Richardson's kick is off over to the far side. It'll bounce at the 12 and roll out of bounds. So... That'll give Berkeley Springs some solid field position on the illegal procedure with 22 seconds to go. We'll see what they can do potentially. Only has one timeout left. You want to be careful, especially after a pick six. That kind of hurts the confidence potentially of Aiden Kane. Yeah, I mean, the type of plays that you would need to get a score before the half, that was the type of play you just threw an interception on. Now, that being said, interception's one thing pick six to let it turn into a score for that's Hampshire, down, that's on the tackling. That, and obviously not all of these guys on offense are also playing defense, but a lot of them are. You know, Berkeley Springs has some pretty small numbers. You have a lot of guys that play both sides of the ball. Even if you're on offense, you should know how to tackle. And they just didn't do a good job there on, on the pick six of bringing down Vandevander. Got to wait for a lineman to come out for Berkeley Springs. Not sure how much time's left on the play clock, unfortunately, as both play clocks are turned off here at Morgan Field. Kane gets the snap, looks to the near side. It's a screen Moore pass caught by Kyle Moore. Moore. Moore slips through a tackle, now runs to the near sideline at the 40, breaks through another. It's going to be wrapped up, still in bounds. That continues to wind the clock, but they call a timeout to stop it with 12 seconds left. But that play takes up 10 seconds, Dylan. And now the clock for some reason winding down even though they called a timeout and it's at six seconds. Should be at 12. We'll see if the officials realize that or not and add six more seconds. If not, this is going to be the final play. At least of this half. 28-13, Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs. I'm not sure what happened with the clock there. They, it was stopped. And whistle blew. And then it just started running again. Unless the whistle blew to end the play, and Barkley Springs didn't call the timeout in time. I, I think it's that might have been six it. seconds instead of 12. Whistles blowing I didn't, to get uh, both teams back onto the field. I didn't immediately hear the second whistle for a timeout, even though you would expect it. Right. 
It's possible the coach Eddie just this, was considering just letting it go into the half. So you got six seconds left. Kane has three receivers near side, one to the far side, gets the snap, dropping back the pass. It's a screen pass caught by Duval. Duval goes up the middle, out across the 50, and it'll be brought down, and that is the end of the first half. After the screen pass, it'll be Hampshire 28, Berkeley Springs 13. So let's step aside, take a two minute break, and on the other side of that break, we'll be back for our Mansion Freddy Law Firm halftime show. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 back in two minutes. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. WVU Medicine is pleased to introduce eight new providers who've joined University Health Associates East and our medical staffs at Berkeley Medical Center and Jefferson Medical Center. Physician's Assistant Casey Weeble, Emergency Medicine, Dr. Mark Seymour, Anesthesia, Dr. Farman Ali, Neurology, Dr. Christopher Redman, Rheumatology, Dr. Sierra Hart, Emergency Medicine, Physician's Assistant Carly Kremer, Cardiology, Nurse Practitioner Jennifer Gorgal, General Surgery, and Nurse Practitioner Corey Lapai, OBGYN. Welcome to WVU Medicine. Locust Hill Golf Course invites you to historic Charlestown, West Virginia for 18 holes of phenomenal golf. We're just an hour drive from the Baltimore, D.C. Beltway and one half hour drive from Winchester and Leesburg, Virginia, as well as Hagerstown and Frederick, Maryland. Each tee offers challenges across the 35 acres of lakes, ponds, and streams, which come into play on 11 holes. The Blue Ridge Mountains also provide a breathtaking backdrop to Locust Hill. Schedule your tee time today at www.locusthillgolfcourse.com or call 304-728-7300. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. We welcome you back to Morgan Field at the half. It is Hampshire 28, Berkeley Springs 13 as our halftime show brought to you by the Mansion Freddy Law Firm in Martinsburg where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com. Colin McLaughlin for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 here alongside me is Dylan Bishop. Our cameraman is Daryl Miller back at the studio who you'll hear from in a few minutes is Nick Verzellini as this one was closer but unfortunately for Berkeley Springs it's been a two turnover difference as they've had a pick six and a fumble given to Hampshire to have Hampshire with no turnovers leading by 15 on the Indians here at homecoming night Dylan. I mean yeah Colin that's been the difference two turnovers two touchdown lead if you hold on to the ball you're able to get down and score those two possessions for yourself because when you've held on to the ball your offense has done pretty well they've been able to get down the field and score two touchdowns on the two drives where they didn't turn the ball over and they've cleaned up the penalties a little bit that that first drive they had 40 penalty yards still got down the field and scored the touchdown and they haven't had a penalty since so they've at least cleaned that up they got to hold on to the ball and if they can do that in the second half they can at least put points up on the board problem is now your defense. You're down two touchdowns to a team that has run the ball incredibly successfully so far out of the flex bone offense with their quarterback and two running backs. And this is exactly what this offense is meant to do. Get up by a couple scores then grind it out. Time of possession and wind down the clock. And Berkeley Springs really hasn't shown that they can stop the run so far. In that 3-4 defense, the three down defensive linemen have just not been able to do enough and hold enough blocks for those linebackers to come down and make plays. If it were me being a defensive coordinator, if I had the ability to, I had the plays in my playbook and the players were it, had practiced it and were prepared to run it, 
I'd switch to an offense or switch to a defense that had more down defensive linemen, four or five plus, more, get more guys into the box, and just make sure that those guys are prepared for play action. But they haven't really been able to stop the play action regardless out of the 3-4 either. So the extra secondary help, extra linebackers, hasn't really helped them out so far in that department. Let's get into our first half stats brought to you by the Larry DeMarco team at Modern Realty Results. If you're looking for a home in the tri-state area, they have you covered, Dylan. Well, let's start with Hampshire, first of all. When they talk about that rushing attack, let's look at what they've done so far. First of all, Jensen Fields, 2 of 4, passing the ball 86 yards on the touchdown, including the 66-yarder uh, that he had on the, on the pass to Brinker. Brinker so far has 118 total yards. Now, 66 of that was on that, that reception that he had out of the backfield. Take that away. He still has a rushing touchdown as well, has over 50 rushing yards. Fields himself has three carries for 45 yards on the ground, and then Robinson has nine carries for 45 yards as well. So you're approaching about 150 rushing yards given up in one half, which is not good. Obviously, if you play that out over four quarters, about close to 300 rushing yards, and it's hard to win any game when you're giving up that many rushing yards. I mean, just, again, time of possession, things of that nature. That's just a lot of yards to give up. It's going to lead to a lot of points. They have to step up and stop the run in the second half. And on the Berkeley Springs side, Aiden Kane throwing the ball really well. 10 of 14, 208 yards passing. Has an interception there at the end when they were trying to get down the field in the two-minute drill. Led to the pick six. He also has run the ball 10 times for a total of 19 yards. A net, two rushing touchdowns. Both quarterback sneaks from the one-yard line. And outside of that, Kyle Moore... Four receptions for 74 yards has been very impressive. Rippon has two catches for 38 yards. And Shiki has two catches for 73 yards, including the 63-yard screen pass that got them down to the one for the first touchdown of the game. 14 minutes to go until we resume play as we have hit halftime. It is 28-13. Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs on Berkeley Springs homecoming night as the Berkeley Springs Indians try to get win number one. They'll have the ball to start the third quarter. Hampshire 2-5 and five, trying to prove to 3-5 and five, as it's the Hampshire Trojan marching band for those tuned in on TV10 or WRNR TV on YouTube out on the field right now. Berkeley Springs marching band will follow as the homecoming court festivities took place during the pregame already. So that's all wrapped up and we'll wrap things up here for now. Take a two-minute break, and on the other side of that break, you'll hear from Nick Verzellini with some scores from around the state. Have a bunch of close games on hand as we're in week eight in the Mountain State. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10, back in two minutes. Hi, Cresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the eastern panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From peewee to the big boys to the wing tee formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for $12 is just what the boys need to be at their best. 
Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $12. We welcome you in to the Halftime Scoreboard Show. I'm your host, Nick Verzellini, here at the half. Berkeley Springs holding a, or I'm sorry, Berkeley Springs trailing Hampshire 28-13. to 13. The other game going on in the P Potomac Valley Conference is between Kaiser and Allegheny, Maryland, and uh, last checked, there was no score update for that game and still no score update for those two teams, but we'll see if they will have one in the post-game scoreboard show. But again, Hampshire on top of Berkeley Springs, 28-13 to 13 here tonight. Let's take a look at some EPAC scores, EPAC scores the uh, teams that we typically have for you here on TV10 and Talk Radio WRNR. Spring Mills holds a 14-0 lead over University at the half. Good game there. It's actually now moved to 14-7 right before halftime, I should say, as University just scored a touchdown to make it 14-7. Musselman takes on Hedgesville tomorrow at Shepherd University. That is a 11 a.m. kickoff between those two teams. Should be a good ball game there. And at halftime, Jefferson over Millbrook right now, 21 to 14. Some other AAA scores from across the state of West Virginia. Good games going on across AAA. Morgantown holding a 7 to 6 lead over Parkersburg. South Huntington with a 7 nothing lead over Parkersburg. Hurricane leading Cavill Midland in a good one, 14-7. Princeton taking on Beckley Woodrow Wilson tonight, and that is a game tied at seven between those two teams. Wheeling Park in a tough one against St. Clairsville, but no score reported between Wheeling Park and St. Clairsville, Ohio, in that game. So, again, our score here at the half, Berkeley Springs trails Hampshire 28 to 13. Let's run down some other scores in Triple A. As we take a look here, it looks like Bridgeport holds a 32 nothing lead over Preston at halftime. Oak Hill, Buchanan, Upshur going at it tonight. No score reported there. St. Albans taking on George Washington. No score reported there. Brook leads John Marshall, 28-7. Spring Valley all over Capital, 34-0. Greenbrier East on top of Ripley, 14-7. And Riverside leads South Charleston, 6-0. So, again, yeah, our score here at the half, Hampshire 28, Berkeley Springs 13. We'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, Colin and Dylan will get you set for the second half between Hampshire and Berkeley Springs. This is West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. 
with four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords. Financing from 0%. Parsons goal of financing for all. And Parsons famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. Welcome back to Morgan Field, still at halftime between Hampshire and Berkeley Springs as it's Hampshire on top, 28-13 to at the half as Pink Panther serenades us here from the Berkeley Springs Indians marching band. About five and a half minutes remaining here in our halftime festivities. Colin McLaughlin alongside me, Dylan Bishop. Our cameraman's Daryl Miller back in the studio who you just heard from. Nick Verzellini with some scores from around the state. Some close games. Still no score update from Kaiser's game as that the Potomac Valley Conference rival of Berkeley Springs, the other being Frankfurt. They have a bye week this week and then next week we'll actually play Hampshire, followed by, or excuse me, play Berkeley Springs. That'll be a tough one. It always is. So, 28-13, Dylan. Both teams still taking their time. I think I might see some people walking over on the sidewalk back to the field, potentially, unless it's a couple fans. That's always tough to tell here as the locker room, the basketball locker rooms on the other side of the campus compared to the football field. So you got to take a long walk there and the long walk back for both teams. Right, they got to come from the C building over here, the, uh, the the four building campus of Berkeley Springs High School, the the A building, the main building of the school. At one time, was the only building of the school, but then they built uh, built some uh, attachments, some expansion, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, including the gym over there in the C building, which got some renovations recently, some some good renovations, well, some much needed. But yeah, they still football team has to come over from from those locker rooms. Over there, take a walk across the the courtyard, across the bridge, uh, and get onto the field here. They've made some recent renovations since last time I was here. There's no, there's no longer the concession stand over on the the far side of the field, opposite of the A building. Yep. Now you got a batting cage. It looks like for baseball, and has some gravel, some cement down as well. New scoreboard here at Morgan Field, as well, and then. Uh, Kind of a restructured press box that we're standing on top of, too. Yeah, that was very recent as of the last year or so. Yeah, I don't think I remember it being like this at the uh, beginning of the season driving by. I think it might have been only a few weeks, but both bands have concluded now marching back to the sideline. The referees back out still waiting for the teams as Berkeley Springs 0-7 so far this year trying to search for a win number one. They'll have the ball to start our quarter number three when both teams come back out. Hampshire trying to improve to three and five this year as this the 30th meeting between Hampshire and Berkeley Springs all time as Hampshire leads the all time series 22 to seven. We'll step aside, take a two minute break. And when we return, hopefully we'll get you set for our second half kickoff here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 again. We're back in two minutes. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the big boys to the wing T formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for $12 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling.
box, 12 pieces of chicken, just $12. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a new or used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back and forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. We welcome you back live at Morgan Field tonight. It's Berkeley Springs in Hampshire coming back from the locker rooms. It looks like it's Hampshire coming back out first. Berkeley Springs closely behind over on the far side of the field to the right. It is 28-13. Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs at the half on Berkeley Springs homecoming night. Dylan, before we get our second half kickoff, as both teams will come out and get a few minutes, I believe, to stretch, let's get some second Welcome half adjustments that you think both teams need to make. Well, I think for Hampshire, the, the secondary needs to be shored up. There's a lot of big plays the Indians have been able to make. And the outside, not just even the coverage, but the tackling as well, if they need to pursue the ball better, uh, I think that's what they, they need. But otherwise, the offense... You know, up by two scores, the rushing attack probably working the way that they want it to, and I think they'll rely heavily on that in the second half like they did in the first couple drives of the game. When it comes to the Indians, I kind of mentioned it earlier in halftime here, right after the end of the half, that that the run defense is just not there. Uh, I, I think that they, if they can make a schematic adjustment, they should do it, get more down linemen uh, on the field, and some bigger bodies make it harder on those offensive linemen. You know, you got five offensive linemen, a tight end, and usually at least one back blocking. And you got three defensive linemen. That's all they have to account for. And a lot of times the Indians, the defensive linemen, haven't really been eating up double teams and occupying multiple blockers to where the, these linebackers can come down into the into the gaps and make plays, you know, behind the line of scrimmage or for one or two yard gains. That's what you need to do to stop this offense. They haven't really been able to do it so far. I think the offense is doing fine outside of the turnovers. Hold on to the ball, you've been able to get the ball down the field. Outside of that, I think they've been pretty good on offense. Some slight adjustments here and there, some um, a misplay here and there. But for the most part, they've done what you would want from them. But it's the defense that needs to stop the run because down by two touchdowns, first of all, this first drive is incredibly important. You have to go down here and score on this drive or else you're going to be trying to play the, the turnover game from here on out because you're going to give Hampshire the ball back You know, in the third quarter, this time of possession, chewing clock type of offense, and you're going to be playing catch-up for the rest of the game. You need to go down here, make it a one-possession game, get a, you know, get a stop. Makes it a lot easier at that point to start going back and forth. If you let this stay at two possessions, Hampshire's just going to pound the ball at you like they did in the first half. So if you can't make that adjustment and stop the rushing attack after you know two yards or less, you're going to absolutely have to score a touchdown on this drive. Beginning and then half, get get a turnover somewhere. Pop, pop the ball out of somebody's hand. 
I'm not sure if maybe for Berkeley Springs, kind of like us, this offensive Hampshire's caught them off guard. I mean, we were expecting coming into this game to see at quarterback number one Landon Eversall, the five foot eight, 180 pound sophomore who averages over 140 yards per game. He's been the starting quarterback. At least from what I was told, even though we haven't seen these teams, whenever I talked to the coach, there there was no sign of this situation coming for Hampshire at all, having Jensen Fields with the wishbone formation at quarterback and being a ground-and-pound team. Right, coming into this game, Hampshire had passed the ball 167 times this year for 1,001 yards, and they had run the ball 110 times for 277 yards. And they are already more than halfway to 277 yards on the ground just in this game. They can surpass their season total for rushing in this game if they keep up the pace that they're on. So maybe that's thrown off the Indians since we didn't see it coming. Obviously, maybe they did, but it's not. that's not what we expected. Richardson sends a short kick that it bounces over the head and into the hands of Shiki at the 15-yard line. Shiki slips through a tackle now. Has his forward progress stopped at the 20, and he somehow, though, gets Number it back three. going out across the 20 at the 23-yard line. First and 10, Berkeley Springs to start off our third quarter as your second half kickoff brought to you by Ollie's VIP Northside, the best local spot to catch or catch sports or hang out with friends. Stop by 36, Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. Ollie's VIP will see you for the game. Third quarter, 11 minutes, 52 seconds on the clock. It is Hampshire 28, Berkeley Springs 13 for those just tuning in. Berkeley Springs with the ball after the second half kick of Hampshire. It is Aiden Kane at quarterback. Connor Duvall is running back, lined up to his left as they're in shotgun formation. They have three receivers on the far side of the field, zero on the near side. Kane bobbles the snap. And he's going to be sacked immediately as coming in untouched to blow out that play is Shane Shepard for Hampshire. Shepard gets the sack after the bobbled snap, and that's not the start you wanted here on your opening drive of quarter number three for Berkeley Springs, making it a second down and 20, Dylan. So that looked like a design run the whole way. He brought in the tight end to give you the extra blocker with the running back as well only having three wide receivers, even though you're in the shotgun. And I think Kane just kind of started to take off before he had the ball. Didn't look it into his hands. Kane sent Shiki in motion, and now a flag thrown, and it's a false flag start field. against Berkeley Springs. And that's the, the first Indians. flag against the Indians that we've seen since quarter number one. Yeah, on the very first drive of the game, they had four penalties for 40 yards. They didn't have any penalties after that in the first half. But here we go again, first drive of the half, and you're putting yourself behind. They send Shiki in motion, a play-action pass, throwing off his back foot's cane, but it's caught by Duval. Duval stiff arms a man on the far side of the field, slips through a tackle, and now he's off to the races. Flag thrown as he's at the 50. At the 45 of Hampshire will be brought down at the 42, but it looks like that's going to be brought back. What a play, though, just a... Little underneath screen pass to the running back, Connor Duval. Gate the big play, but still get Berkeley Springs back into some pretty solid field position after a first and 25. Great play design. Hampshire did not see that coming at all. Sort of a middle screen. A lot of times, you know, a slip screen to a running back is out towards the side of the field. But Duval came up the middle of the offensive line, ran the screen there, and Hampshire just didn't have anyone in the middle of the field. But then you get a hold on his, during the run. So that was second down. Looks like they're keeping it at second down. So it looks like, to me, will be second down in 14 after that play. Interesting. Because you had the first down be the bobbled snap, so that should have yeah. been second down. It looks like Berkeley Springs might get a little extra help here. High snap, fake handoff, read option. Kane keeps it, goes up the middle on the read option. We'll go back to the original line of scrimmage during that first down. 
just shy of the 25 at the 24. So that makes it what should be fourth down and nine, but it's third down and nine. Yeah, I'm not sure why we stayed at second down after that penalty. I don't know. Nobody's caught it, though. Berkeley Springs breaks the huddle with a third down and nine, 9.38 to go in quarter number three. Two receivers to each side of Kane. Gets the snap, rolls out to his right, steps up in the pocket and runs right into a tackler, and he sacks on the play and lost the ball. It looks like Shepard's trying to say as he jumps in with it, but they're going to say his forward progress was stopped before Shepard for Hampshire got the ball, and that's going to make it fourth down. And for the first time tonight, we're going to see a punt, it looks like. As DJ Hinkle for Berkeley Springs goes out to punt. Back to return for Hampshire will be Jensen Fields and Caleb Vandevander, who earlier had that pick six to make it 28-13. Number 11, Caleb Van, Van Vander. Timeout taken by Hampshire here. Yeah, and Hampshire forced to take a timeout as they had too many players on the field. 8.52 to go in the third quarter. It's 28-13. Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs. We'll step aside, take a 30-second break. Back to the studio, Nick. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. point to us during that break As I originally said it looked like Berkeley Springs got an extra play however he makes the great point Dylan they actually lost a play because the play with the penalty was a first down that got brought the back. thought crossed my mind but it was so weird to you know on second down get a first down but the penalty I don't know it Ankles was punt a high punt that will bounce at the 48 take a Berkeley Springs roll to Hampshire's 38 well, I said he trying to say that that was touched by Hampshire, but they're going to say it wasn't as Isaiah Hutchinson picks it up and downs it for Berkeley Springs. So that'll be a first and 10 for the Hampshire Trojans at their 38-yard line with 8.42 to go in this third quarter, up 28-13 on Berkeley Springs. So I was trying to do that calculus in my head because the penalty happened before the first down marker. The play ended up being a first down. It was a second down when it happened, so how do you call that play? The penalty happened before the first down marker, but the result of the play was, or was it was a first down. And you got to bring the ball 10 yards back from where the penalty happened. It ends up second down somehow. I don't think it worked out for the Indians. Fields gets the snap. Hands it off to Robinson. Robinson tries to push up the middle, but he's only able to get to the 40-yard line, so that's a gain of two. Griffin on the tackle, makes it second down and eight for Hampshire with 8.25 to go, clock winding down in this third quarter. And this is where the danger starts for the defense of Berkeley Springs. Down by two scores, you haven't been able to slow down the rushing attack. It's about 150 yards you gave up on not a whole lot of chunk plays either. I think there's a run of 12 yards in here, 21, but 18. Fields keeps it himself, runs Go out back. to the left, Number has a blocker eight. in front of him. Two Andy flags Carey. thrown as he's out across Berkeley Springs territory two, at the 50 at the 45 Jensen and is brought down at the 44-yard line flags. on the far side. But those flags holding penalties at the line of scrimmage against Hampshire will back Steven things up to make it second down and long for the Trojans with 7.54 to go in quarter number three. We take a look at Robinson's stat line it, it, every carry that he's had so far oh, in this one the Trojans. he had the 18 yard run we've count that out he's had carries of two three four four six two three four two you're okay with two yards but that's a lot of three four six three four six that's what that's what makes a drive go four five six seven plus minutes second down and 18 
Fields gets the snap. Hands it off to his running back. That is number eight there, Brennan Brinker. Brinker goes to the right and then tries to go up the middle after he found some space, but not much. That's only a gain of two. Brings up third down and 16 now for Hampshire, who has been predominantly run. We have seen him air it out a few times, including a big play for a touchdown. We'll see what the senior Jensen Fields has to do here on this third down and 16 in quarter number three with 7.20 to go on the clock. And Fields is in shotgun formation this time. I haven't seen that all night long. Berkeley Springs goes with the covers here of press, sends a blitz. Fields drops back to pass, now steps up in the pocket. Steps backwards, though, trying to extend the play to throw, and he's going to be sacked at the 25-yard line as Isaiah Hutchinson brings him down, and that will be fourth down and even longer for Hampshire now as Hutchinson was injured earlier. We saw him limping off the field. Good to see that he is healthy and able to get the sack to end Hampshire's drive, Dylan. Absolutely, and that's a huge stop by the defense. And it was interesting. That was really tipping their hand at, at a passing play there. And I, obviously third and pretty long, you kind of had to. But they had been making it work out of the out of flex mode formations. They brought in Aiden Whitaker as a blocking running back. Grayson Richardson on the punt, and it's blocked! He turns around, but it's recovered by Berkeley Springs as falling on top of the blocked punt is Christian Norris. And Berkeley Springs will get the ball with 6.20 to go in quarter number three, down 28-13 on Hampshire. At Hampshire's, it looks like, I believe that's the eight-yard line. So first and goal, Berkeley Springs on the blocked punt. Actually, the kind of momentum-shifting play that they needed. You didn't get the touchdown on your first offensive drive, but your defense comes up huge, your special teams comes up even bigger, and all of a sudden, first and goal, and you can swing this the way that you wanted to, get this to a one-possession game. And I could see that coming, honestly, from a mile away, Dylan, because yep. typically you see punters 15 yards back. Hutchinson nowhere close to that. Jet sweep from Kane to Jake Sheiky. Sheiky goes from left to right on the jet sweep. Inside the five, tackled at the four. So a pick up of three will bring up second and goal from the four. But that's why you have him 15 yards back. Any closer, you allow that defense to get a hand on it. And that's yeah. exactly what Berkeley Springs did. And it wasn't absurdly great timing or acceleration burst off the off the line. So I think you're right, Colin. It was the it was not great blocking by Hampshire up front, and the punter was not that far back. Ball lined up on the right hash mark, the three yard line they say for Berkeley Springs. Second and goal, 5:40 to go in quarter number three. It's a 15-point deficit for the Indians. Kane gets the snap, but you see the left side of the offensive line jump early. So that's a false start against Berkeley Springs to back up the second and goal to the eight-yard line now. That's what I'm talking about. Mistakes. Shooting yourself in the foot. It's not a lack of talent it's holding this team back. It's mistakes. Second and goal at the eight-yard line. Berkeley Springs will break the huddle. Aiden Kane, the quarterback. Connor Duvall is running back, lined up to his left. Two receivers to each side of Kane. Kane gets the snap, dropping back the pass, looks to the near side. It's a guy underneath, intended pass for Jonah Kirk. Just in front of him, falls incomplete. And that brings up third down and goal now at the eight-yard line. And while a five-yard penalty doesn't seem that huge, it completely changes your play calling. And we see here that's a, you know, that was second and eight instead of second and three at the goal line. That's a totally different set of plays that you're running at that point, and this one ends up an incomplete pass. 5.07 to go in quarter number three. Berkeley Springs uses a timeout. And with that timeout, let's get you our third quarter of sponsors. This we're brought to you by the Marius Group and Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg or call them at 304-263-4343 as well. As the Larry DeMarco team at Modern Realty Results, if you're looking for a home in the tri-state area, they've got you covered. 
Scoreless third quarter so far between Hampshire and Berkeley Springs as Hampshire in the lead with 5.07 to go in this third quarter. Berkeley Springs, though, in the red zone at the eight-yard line with a third down in goal, trying to make this a one-possession game with a touchdown. Something they've only had twice tonight, both on quarterback sneaks from Aiden Kane at the one. Right now they're at the eight. Kane in shotgun formation. This time they have Sheiky in the backfield. He gets the snap, throws a pass up the middle, three receivers around it. It goes over the head. It looks like, I believe, of Jonah Kirk again, and incomplete. So that will bring up fourth down and goal. And now Berkeley Springs will send Duval back in. And the rest of the offense stays out there to go for it here on fourth and eight. So that's what I was kind of talking about, where they definitely wanted to run the ball in second and three. We saw it. They were going to run that quarterback bash play with Kane again. That's had some pretty good success for them. Back it up five yards. They've been passing the ball on second and third down. It hasn't worked out. You condense the field. All the, there's no 20-yard down the field safety. It's hard to pass the ball in the red zone. Fourth and goal from the eight. Man in motion. Play action pass. Kane drops back the pass. Rolls out to his right. Has to stiff arm the man. And he's going to be brought down. But a flag thrown wow. while he's brought down. As bringing him down is Caleb Vandevander. And it looks like that might be a penalty against him. I think that's a horrible. So that will change everything. As that was fourth and goal from the eight. And it looks like you're right, Dylan. And that... Makes it half the distance to the goal for Berkeley Springs. Hampshire. So now the ball at the four-yard line. Hampshire completely bailed out the Berkeley Springs offense there. Reminder, uh, just to, He did not need to do that to bring down Kane. He could have just wrapped him up, and it would have been a turnover on downs. So now it's fourth and goal at the four-yard line. Kane, shotgun on formation. Duval to his right, two receivers to each side. He gets the snap, dropping back the pass. As a man wide open on the far side, it's Duval. He stumbles, but he's able to stay up, and it's a touchdown for Berkeley Springs. 4.49 to go in quarter number three. It's now Hampshire 28, Berkeley Springs 19, as we have an injured Berkeley Springs Indian, and it looks like we also have a flag at the line of scrimmage. I think the injury might be Connor Duval. Duval, unfortunately, and it looks like you have a second man down here at the line of scrimmage, too, for Berkeley Springs. Duval, it looked like hopefully just a potential rolled ankle. Don't want to speculate, but I think that's why he kind of stumbled there. So we'll, we'll see, but he was able to score the touchdown. We're going to step aside since there's two injured players and take a one-minute break back in the studio. Nick, a one-minute break as the touchdown will stand to make it 28-19 with 4.49 to go here in the first quarter. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10 back in a minute. Locust Hill Golf Course invites you to historic Charlestown, West Virginia for 18 holes of phenomenal golf. We're just an hour drive from the Baltimore, D.C. Beltway and one half hour drive from Winchester and Leesburg, Virginia, as well as Hagerstown and Frederick, Maryland. Each tee offers challenges across the 35 acres of lakes, ponds, and streams, which come into play on 11 holes. The Blue Ridge Mountains also provide a breathtaking backdrop to Locust Hill. Schedule your tee time today at www.locusthillgolfcourse.com or call 304-728-7300. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. We welcome you back here in quarter number three. Some offensive linemen of Berkeley out to the far side of the end zone now to help up, I believe, Connor Duval, who scored the touchdown on the fourth and goal from the four-yard line. He stumbled his way into the end zone, and it looks like it might be that left leg that he can't put much weight on, but he makes it 28-19 now with 4.49 to go in this third quarter. What a tough play by Connor Duval, the senior, being carried off the field now. Hopefully he's okay in the long run. Definitely a sad situation there for him. Anytime, what a trooper. I mean, 
You catch it at the four. You can clearly see him stumble, Dylan, but yeah. he's able to keep going, get that adrenaline pumping, and score for Berkeley Springs on what, if he didn't, would have been turnover on downs. Right. It's heady, like hard nosed, tough play. To grind it out, get into the end zone. You never like to see a non-contact leg injury. It's uh, you always worry when you see that. Hopefully, it's not the worst case scenario or any sort of worst case scenario. We'll say we did get an explanation on on the penalty earlier uh, from uh, an official uh, chiming in. Say it was it was a pass on that play. Block okay. in the back, took the ball back to the line of scrimmage and replay the down. Okay. So that's why it stayed second down earlier. Makes sense. While we wait here for both teams to go back out onto the field, it should be a extra point time or a two-point conversion. We'll see what Berkeley Springs decides to do as they run out onto the field. It is 28-19, 4.49 to go in quarter number three, so it looks like... Try to make it a seven-point game. Berkeley Springs will go for two. But at the As same time, oh, no, never mind. Nope, that was actual Robles out there to go yeah. for one. But the way they were setting up at first made it look like they were going for two. I guess he just hadn't gotten into the kicking position yet. Cause Aiden Kane is also the holder. But now there's some sort of confusion going on. Yeah, not sure what's taking place now, and... I think it might be because Aiden Kane was hurt. He has to sit oh, out this you're play right. you're unless right. you call a timeout, which means now you need a new holder, and the new holder coming out will be Jake Olibaugh, number five to hold the kick for Axel Robles, trying to make this a one-score game as they both hustle out there now and line things up quickly. Snap is back. The hold is down, and it goes right into the lineman. And no good. And that and keeps hold. it a two score game. That was the hold. 28 so 28 19. The score remains. Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs with 4.49 to go in quarter number three. Step aside, take a 30 second break. A 30 second break back to the studio. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent yeah, all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back here as it's 28-19. Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs after the four-yard touchdown catch by number two, Connor Duval for Berkeley Springs to get that score. Unfortunately, though, for Berkeley Springs on the touchdown, Connor Duval was injured with his left leg, and he's on the near sideline with his shoulder pads off, so it looks like his night will be finished. D.J. Hinkle on to kick off for Berkeley Springs. It's to the far side, caught by Brennan Brinker, and Brinker tries to follow his blockers, has space, now reverses Fields to the near side, and there goes Brinker at the 50, at the 40, has one man to beat at the 30, at the 20, and wrapped up by the kicker, D.J. Hinkle, but a huge return by Hampshire. Gets them great field position at the 15-yard line of Berkeley Springs with 4.37 to go in quarter number three. Man, Hampshire needed that. Well, they're still up by two scores. But it was a great chance for them to immediately go back up here and even be up by three touchdowns. Or two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Jensen Fields under center. Robinson and Hinkle lined up behind him. He fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, follows the Number blocker two. of Brinkle, and now goes to the far side as Fields out of bounds. Excuse me, Brinker, not there. Brinkle. Kind of combined there, Hinkle and Brinker. 
for Brinkle, both on different teams, though, so my apologies, as it's a holding penalty that will back things up for Hampshire, and that's kind of started to be a problem for them so far now recently, Dylan. Yeah, over the last couple possessions, they've gotten a few more penalties. They'll only have them down in the, bu in the books for five penalties, but that last drive, the touchdown happened because of a penalty. The personal foul, horse collar tackle, gave the Gave the Tribe another fresh set of downs at the goal line when it could have been a turnover on downs. 28-19 your score. First down and 15 for Hampshire. Fields gets the snap. Hands it off to Brinker. Brinker goes up the middle and will be wrapped up and tripped up. Eventually brought down out across the 15 the at the 13-yard line. So that will bring up a second down and six after a game of it looks like about six yards there for Hampshire. Under four minutes to go in quarter number three. Clock ticking down at 3.53 now. With it being 28-19, Hampshire leading Berkeley Springs. Two receivers to the near side for Hampshire. None to the far side for Fields. Fields against the snap. And rolls out to his right. Miscommunication. He has a man wide open, but he's going to keep it himself. And Hutchinson brings him down. That looks Isaiah like Hutchinson he was only able on the near two, side of the field to pick up. Gary. It looks like four yards. So that will make it a third down and two. But he had a man wide open in the end zone. Just didn't see him, though. I don't know that that was a pass play. I mean, I suppose it was. The receiver wasn't blocking. But I think at the very least, Fields had decided that it was no longer a pass play. He was talking the ball and, and rushing for what he could. And you know, that, uh, the quarterback should keep his eyes down the field until he's past the line of scrimmage, be ready to pass it on a pass play. Jensen Fields, the senior, goes lined up under center. It's Brinker in the backfield to the right, Robinson to the left, gets the snap, hands it off to Robinson. Robinson has a hole, is able to pick up the first down, but will be tackled just shy of the end zone, it looks like, at the one-and-a-half to two-yard line. But that makes it first and goal for Hampshire with 2.44 to go in the third quarter. First and goal. Big day for Jensen Fields, a guy typically a wide receiver, but he's playing quarterback today instead of Landon Eversole, who's still on that far sideline for Hampshire. And it's worked so far for the Trojans. Fields under center. Gets the snap. It's quarterback sneak. He tries to go up the middle. But Berkeley Springs wins the battle with the trenches. And that'll bring up second down and goal. Brian Hiller. Well, it's tough to do that you know, three times in a row. See if they go back to it, but it's a good stop that time. That was Brian Ayler in to make the stop. However, he lost his helmet, so he's now going to have to take the next play off. That could make a difference. They're bringing a sophomore now, Chris Stadler. Hampshire breaks the huddle again for a second and goal at the two. And this time they hand it off to Robinson. Robinson goes up the middle and into the end zone. Touchdown, Hampshire. A minute 41 to go in Touchdown. quarter number three. And that makes it Hampshire 34, Berkeley Springs 19. And that's the power of Xander Robinson, the 6'2", 180-pound senior tailback. Bryson Richardson will now attempt an extra point. And now, the extra point can put you up to where you need two touchdowns, two two-point conversions if you're the Tribe. That one almost blocks, but the extra point is up. Even though it was kind of short, it was good. That makes it 35-19, a minute 41 to go in this third quarter. Let's step aside and take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio WRNR TV 10. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the eastern panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? 
How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. We welcome you back here. It is now 35-19. Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs with a minute 41 to go. In quarter number three, there's Bryson Richardson to kick off. Jay Cheeky back to return for Berkeley Springs. Hampshire kicks off. It's Richardson. Sending a booming kick that will be caught by Shiki. Up the middle goes Shiki. Breaks off one tackler. Goes out to the 20 before being brought down. Looked like he lost First the ball, stop, but they say his forward progress was stopped. Down, so it'll be 1st and 10, Berkeley Springs at the 20. And Hampshire got the touchdown there after a great kickoff return. Got them down to the 15-yard line, so they only needed five plays, 15 yards to get down and score that touchdown, put themselves up by 16. Scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. It will be first and 10, Berkeley Springs, as they say, Sheiky's forward progress spots the ball at the 22-yard line. As Berkeley Springs comes out from the near sideline, you'll have three receivers to the far side in the golden blue, none on the near side of the field for Aiden Kane. Running back to his right, gets the snap. Quick pass to the far side, and it's over the hands, but somehow snagged down by Kyle Moore. But because of how high that pass was, he was na- never excuse me, able to start Number going 18, forward. So that section. screen pass Number actually eight. goes for Brown the Brown negative Brown. of two yards to make Same it second down and 12. Yeah, Kane just kind of didn't he overextended his shoulder. I think, and never was able to get that ball down. So Moore had to jump up and catch it. The screen pass usually is behind the line of scrimmage, but it doesn't usually hang up in the air for that long. It was read by Hampshire well, though. Second down and 12. Hampshire sending a blitz. Kane rolls out to his right now, looks downfield. Pass that goes underneath the diving intended receiver. Adam Rippon, it falls incomplete to make it third down and 12. Quick update here for Berkeley Springs, some good news. Out of the injury of Connor Duvall, he has his shoulder pads back on. His left knee is wrapped up and pretty heavily in tape. However, he's walking under his own power back and forth on the sideline, just trying to see how that knee feels. Not sure if he's going to try to continue to play. That would be something, but we'll have to wait and see. What it's not often you see the pads come off and then come back on. He's going to grab his helmet, so let's wait a few plays and see what Duval does. But third down and 12, snap back to Kane. He drops back the pass, stays in the pocket, and that pass picked off, and it goes right into the hands of a Hampshire Trojan, Caleb Vandevander, with his second interception of the night. 31 seconds to go in quarter number three. It'll be first and 10 Trojans at the Berkeley Springs 20. It looks like 8-yard line, 28-yard line. He has been huge. Aiden Kane started off the game passing the ball really well, but Vandevander has been doing a great job from that safety position, corner position as well, at just reading the eyes of Aiden Kane, and now that's two passes that he's jumped. Back to Connor Duvall. His shoulder pants are now coming off. It looks like the training staff not going to let him go out there no matter how much he wants to. First and 10 for Hampshire now on the 28-yard line. It's Fields. Play action pass as he fakes the handoff. Chucks it deep. Has a man in the end zone. And that is caught by Vandevander. Over the head of the corner into the hands of him. Touchdown Hampshire to make it 41 seconds to go in the third. Wow. And I think with just two straight plays there, Van de Vander may have just very clearly moved into the pole position for player of the game. Yeah, that was Luke Birch, the corner that it looked like thought that pass might have been underthrown, so he went for the interception, but it continued to 
just float into the air and fall right into Van Devander's hands. That that pass should have been intercepted, or at the very least deflected, broken up. Y your defensive back needs to make the play there. Richardson on to attempt the extra point as the kick is up into the air and good. 42-19, Hampshire extends its lead over Berkeley Springs with 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Let's step aside and take a one-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. Mommy, where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. Meat, corn, even the pie. <laughs> and then the Traeger does the rest, which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. We welcome you back to Morgan Field. It is Hampshire on top of Berkeley Springs, 42 to 19 as Bryson Richardson on to kick off for the Hampshire Trojans back to return for Bryson Berkeley Springs is Jacob Sheiky. Richardson sends a low line drive kick that's going to bounce and roll on the far side of the field. Sheiky waits for it to stop rolling so he scoops it up at the eight on the far sideline and it looks like they say he stepped out of bounds and he got rocked there. He's shaking up a little bit. Might have a stinger. It's kind of what he is signaling. Let's get our scoring drive summary now. Brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. It's yeah, just one play, 25 yards. The pass from Fields to Vandevander really threw, hung up in the air, should have been intercepted, but Vandevander comes down with it one play after he makes the interception off of Aiden Kane to really just completely swing this thing to where th that might have wrapped it up. 15 seconds to go. We're still in the third quarter. Berkeley Springs ball, first and 10. Looks like at its own, I believe, 14 yard line. Kane in the shotgun formation. Three receivers to the far side. Running back next to him. He keeps it himself. We'll follow that running back for a block. But he's dragged by the horse collar and brought down. So that is a penalty against Hampshire. It's Jenkins with a horse collar penalty. Well, that's another break for, for Berkeley Springs. Second horse collar tackle on Kane. I guess the Hampshire defenders, when you, when you face someone as athletic as Kane, the they can kind of get desperate down, and start really reaching, pulling to try to make tackles when you just have to stay disciplined. Trust your technique, your form, even your own athleticism, even if you think Kane's faster than you. That's the end of the quarter. That's the end of, yep. the third quarter. End of quarter number three, Hampshire, 42, Berkeley 42, Springs, 19 is your 19, score. Let's step aside, take a one-minute break, and then be back for quarter number four. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. Bodwell Insurance Solutions.com or 304 283 0864. 
The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Back for quarter number four. Berkeley Springs ball, first and ten. They get the ball. It's a quarterback keeper by Kane. Kane goes up the middle, has some blockers, now goes to the far side. Lowers his shoulder, has the first down out across Berkeley Springs 40. They say he stopped at the, looks like, 40-yard line exactly is where his knee went down. So pick up of 12 makes it another first down for Berkeley Springs to start off the fourth quarter. He hasn't had a ton of success today, especially compared to last week rushing the ball. He just had 19 net yards. Uh, now, granted, co a couple of sacks uh, in the first half, but he's been able to break off a couple runs. It's the second longest run of the day. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. He sends a man in motion, does Kane. It's a jet sweep into the Jason gut Jackie, of Yakowski, and Yakowski runs right into a linebacker who pushes Xander him Robinson down. That was Xander Robinson on, on the stop. The jet sweep from left to right only picks up a yard to bring up second down in nine with 11 minutes, 10 seconds to go here in quarter number four. It's Hampshire 42, Berkeley Springs 19. The Run out of time. Break the huddle. Looks like they'll go with the three wide receivers bunched together inside the numbers on the near side again. The lone receiver on the far side is the freshman Kyle Moore. They send Sheiky in motion, and this time it's a jet sweep to Sheiky. Back to back jet carries. sweeps. Hampshire reads it this time, and it's a tackle for a loss. Puts the ball at the 40, a loss of one. We'll make it third and down and 11. Third down. It's not exactly inspired play calling. Okay, really, with this much time left, you need to be going down the field probably more often. I know Kane's throw a couple interceptions now that you know maybe is questioning you know if how much he's on his game now. But he had a great first half throwing the ball. Before the interception, he had thrown for two over 200 yards in the half, and I thought he had passed the ball down the field in particularly very well other than the interception right at the half, right before the half. Third down and 10. Again, Sheiky in motion. Play action pass. Kane drops back to pass. Rolls out now to his left, and he's going to run, but he's going to be sacked. Lost the ball. Does Hampshire I, have it, or do they say he was down? I don't think he was down. Waiting for the signal. It doesn't look like a turnover, though. It looks like Berkeley Springs recovered it. Not sure who. Tough to tell on that far side. But they Trojans sent the blitz, and that forced Kane to scramble. And it's a loss of one on the play. That brings up fourth down, and Berkeley Springs will decide to punt on the fourth and 11 with nine minutes, 10 seconds to go in quarter number four, down 42 to 19. Hampshire in control of this one here on Berkeley Springs homecoming night. DJ Hinkle back to punt for the Indians. And a flag thrown. Flag on the field. And it looks like they're counting players for Hampshire, I think. Which now might, because of the penalty, change the mind of Berkeley Springs head coach Wes Eddy to go for it. Nope, he decides to keep the punt team out there. He was sending them back at first, but then realizes it's still a fourth down, and it looks like six, so he's going to keep the punt team out. Hankel standing at the 30, back to punt. Snap is back, and it's over his head. So he, though, able to just shimmy over to the left and at least get a kick off. It's not that long. Takes a Hampshire bounce and will be recovered. It looks like, or down, excuse me, not recovered. And... Hampshire's 44-yard line. I'm not exactly sure what part of the second half has really led you to believe that you can punt the ball there and get three stops in eight and a half minutes and also get three scoring drives. 
I absolutely would have went for it there. I don't think there's enough time left on the clock for you to be punting now down by three scores. I agree. First and ten, fourth quarter, 8.33 to go. Hampshire up 42-19. Field, or excuse me, now Eversoles into the game at quarterback for the first time tonight. He'll hand it off to Xander Robinson, and Robinson runs up the middle. His forward progress gains him five yards. They say he stopped at the 49-yard line. Well, that at least exit the uh, gets rid of the possibility of an injury to Eversole for a while. We've seen Fields. Second day. Maybe just it's just been a change of philosophy. I mean, it, teams two and five. Perhaps coach just said what we've been doing is not working, and Coach Rule just decided to switch up the offense. So Eversole under center. We'll hand it off to his tailback and. He's only to get across the 50, trying to push him back. Late flag thrown. That, and the 50-yard line is in on the carry for Hampshire is number 20, Hayden Snyder. And that penalty goes against the Trojans. 7.44 to go in quarter number four. The second down will back things up if Berkeley Springs decides to accept it, which it looks like they will. And that puts the ball at Hampshire's 44-yard line to make it a second down and 11. Hampshire breaks the huddle. It's the sophomore Landon Eversole under center. Two running backs behind him, two receivers to the far side for the sophomore. 7.30 to go on the clock. It's winding down, so Hampshire will take its time. Snap to Eversole. He hands it off, and in on the carry, it goes into the gut of, it looks like, again on the carry, Hayden Snyder. And again, it's Ayler in on the stop, and again, he loses his helmet, Dylan. That's twice now that we've seen him lose that helmet. He made a great play, though. I will say, this is the first play I noticed it. I'm not sure if they've been doing it before. The, there were four down defensive linemen on, on that play for the Indians. So they at least made an adjustment that time, knowing that Hampshire certainly is in chew clock mode at the moment. Third down and 11. We're back to three now, though. 6.38 to go. Clock winding down in quarter number four. Eversole. Take the snap. Drop back. The pass rolls out to his right. Fires a pass. It's caught underneath by Robinson. He runs out on the far side. It will be pushed out of bounds by Hutchinson at the 50-yard line. So that will make it a fourth down and five for Hampshire. It looks like they're going to decide to punt. Last time we saw them punt, it was blocked. So we'll see what happens this time around. And again, Colin Punter's only about 12 yards behind the ball. Number nine, Bryce Richardson back to punt. Yeah, it looks like you're correct. He's lined up at the 38. Snap is back and a flag thrown. He's able to get the punt away. Goes to the far side, bouncing. The The 20 takes a big roll, goes inside the 10, and will be stopped inside the 10 at the 9. That flag thrown. And I was looking during that punt at Xander Robinson, I believe, for Hampshire, coming back onto the field. So that might be an illegal substitution penalty against Hampshire. Take back this punt. 5.37 to go in quarter number four. It is Hampshire 42, Berkeley Springs 19. So we quickly will get our fourth quarter sponsors here as we wait for the ball to be spotted after the penalty. Your fourth quarter brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services like home and office automation, home theater networking, audio, video, distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com as well as Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer. Visit them at 360 Hack Wilson Way or online at orsini's.com. Again, Richardson on to punt. And this time, it's almost blocked. And it will bounce at the 25 and take a Berkeley Springs favored roll. 
And did he touch it? Did Hutchinson touch it? Everybody falls on top of it. Hampshire trying to say that he did and that it should be their ball as that was recovered by the Trojans as scooping it up and falling on top of it was Sean King. But they say Hutchinson never touched it, so that'll be Berkeley Springs ball first and 10 for the Indians at its 28-yard line with 5 minutes, 12 seconds to go, trailing Hampshire 42-19. So, hindsight 2020, you get the stop after the punt. However, you've only got five minutes, three 12 minutes, seconds. 26 seconds went off the clock. Yep. And that's been the name of this uh, offense. It's been normal all game long for Hampshire to be able to get about four minutes out of a drive, even if they don't score. So, Kane out at quarterback. In the backfield is Steven Olibal, the running back to his left. He has two receivers to each side, does Kane. He gets the snap. He's going to keep it himself, and immediately Hampshire blitzes, and he's wrapped up by two Trojans. That time he just had zero protection. That sack is a loss for Berkeley Springs of six, making it second down and 16 with under five to go. It's tough now. Your offensive line's tired. They've been out there all game long. A lot of those guys have been playing defense, too. It's the big downside to having a smaller roster. A lot of times your guys are playing both ways. They get down to this part of the game, they are probably gassed. Berkeley Springs will call a timeout with four minutes, 30 seconds to go in fourth quarter. It is 42-19. Hampshire leads Berkeley Springs. We'll take a... 30-second break. This is West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio of WRNR and TV 10 back in 30 seconds. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Back with four minutes, 30 seconds to go in this fourth quarter between Hampshire and Berkeley Springs. Hampshire leads 42 to 19. Second down and 16 to snap the cane. He'll hand it off to Yakowski, who gives it to Shiki. Shiki on the far side has space. Tries to beat King, but King, the last man to beat, stops Sheiky at Hampshire's 35-yard line. So Berkeley Springs goes back with some trickery to get a big play inside Hampshire territory now. That's the second time they've run that play, and it was pretty successful the first time. I believe it might have come back for a penalty on the first, uh, first attempt. But this time, whole defense was, was fooled. Shiki comes back around. It's, it's a creative play. I like the play call a lot. So the double reverse makes it first down and 10 for Berkeley Springs and the 35 of Hampshire. Risky to run the ball, too. Took a risk. Kane with the read option will run up the middle, spins past the tackle, out across the 30 up the middle he goes and will be brought down at the 30-yard line. So a gain of five makes it second down and five. Under four minutes to go, clock winding down with three minutes and 50 on the clock. It is Hampshire 42, Berkeley Springs 19. Now Aiden Kane had thrown the ball 14 times in the first half. Obviously ended with the pick six. He's only thrown the ball seven times this half, even though they've been down the entire half by multiple scores. Kane bobbles the snap. He's able to recover it while being pushed. And he's out behind the 45, and now some pushing and shoving a flag thrown. As Kane frustrated there, thought he took a late shot after that one. As in making the stop, I believe, for Hampshire was Carter Smith. That almost would have been another turnover. We want to give a special thanks Still a huge loss on the play for, for Berkeley Springs. As the ball the now at the 45-yard line, so that makes it third down and 20. And we'll wait to see what the penalty does, though. Who's it against? 
if it negates, if it's just Hampshire. Looks like it's just Hampshire, so that brings the ball back to the 30-yard line for Berkeley Springs. It's a good break for them. Able to move the ball down the field, but at this point, I think you're just running out of time. Unless you can get some one-side kicks and some very quick scores. Yeah, three minutes, ten seconds to go. The clock winding down. Berkeley Springs still huddled up, not having any sort of hurry up at all. Sense of urgency. Where up. we? Yeah. Where is it? Come on. They now struggle to even get in formation. I know. If we, it's one thing for us to say the game is over. Players on the field should never think it's over until the final whistle blows. And again, they try to go with a double reverse end around on the near side. Goshiki has a great block by Kane, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 15-yard line. So that's a first down as, again, it goes Kane to Yakowski, Goshiki to the near side, and that makes it a first and 10 for Berkeley Springs. I'm surprised to see that that play worked so well two times on the same drive, but yeah, props to him if you see that Hampshire's not figuring it out keep going to it two minutes 30 seconds to go in the fourth quarter Berkeley Springs breaks the huddle down 42 to 19 it's Kane shotgun formation with Yakowski at running back after Duval unfortunately injured earlier in the game in the third quarter he gets the snap dropping back this time looks the pass it's a pass that's picked off and all alone down the field on the far side goes the linebacker Yakowski tries to bring him down at the 40 on the far side. He gets shoved out by Kane, and that intercepted by Hayden Andre Snyder, Andre number Davis 20, in with the INT. That's the fourth turnover forced by Hampshire's defense with 2.07 to go. They get the ball First at down, Berkeley 30. Springs' 36 yard line, up 42 to 19. Hampshire's by four possessions, and there's four turnovers. You don't have to. You don't have to be a math teacher to figure that one out. What about a substitute math teacher? Ah, it's a little different, you know. <laughs> Two minutes seven seconds to go in quarter number four here on Berkeley Springs homecoming night. At halftime, it was 28-13. Berkeley Springs got the ball to start the half, and just unfortunately for the Indians, too many turnovers tonight, as you said, Dylan. Four turnovers, four possession game, 42-19 is your score. So it looks like the Indians will most likely fall to 0-8. Hampshire will improve to 3-5. Hampshire with the ball. It's the timeout. Not sure which team took it. Looks like that was Hampshire calling the timeout after the turnover, making sure they can calm their guys down. Doesn't want anything chippy here. Berkeley Springs back out onto the field with the defense. Hampshire will follow now. Suit from the far sideline. As it's the sophomore Landon Eversole leading the offense at quarterback after Jensen Fields, it looks like, a day at the quarterback spot ended last drive. So it ends up a tough day uh, for, for Kane throwing the ball. Three interceptions. Didn't do much in the second half. Just 17 yards on just three completions. He had two completions to the other team in the second half. Eversole takes the snap. He'll hand it off to his tailback. And that, after the INT, is Hayden Snyder again. He gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage, so just jumps forward and is able to gain, looks like, three yards to make it second down and seven ball at the 33-yard line. And I bring that up, the same three of eight, you know, with what, 17 yards, two interceptions in the second half. Bring that up to follow it up by saying he played really well in the first half, so I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if he got down on himself after the first interception or what, but it, he just never got that confidence back in, in some way. Eversol, this time we'll hand it off. It looks like this time to Brett Evans, and Evans has a big push out across the 20, a first down and then some for Evans. And that should be enough for a first down. It'll stop the clock with a minute 13, but now Hampshire can just get in victory formation and kneel this one out and pick up a win at 42-19. to 19. Yeah, it was just... 
a really dominant rushing attack out of the flex bone for Hampshire. Again, it wasn't what we thought that they were going to run. May have been a mid-season adjustment by Hampshire. And this may be the first game that they've done it, as far as we know. That's what we think. Based on their stats, that, that that's backed up. Eversol gets the snap, and they'll continue to run it. They hand it off, going up the middle now. It's Evans oh, again. His forward Number progress seven, definitely eight, had him stop, but they allow stop. his play to continue. Remington sights. As Remington sights in on the tackle. Evans able to, though, pick up five yards, make it second down, ball at the 14-yard line, 30 seconds to go. Not sure how much time's on the play clock since they're turned off here at Morgan Field. We'll see if Hampshire decides to take a play or not. It looks like they're heading to the far side. Berkeley Springs will head to the near side. They'll allow the clock to expire, and the Hampshire Trojans will pick up the road win over Berkeley Springs by a final score of 42 to 19 as Hampshire improves to 3 and 5 on the season. Berkeley Springs falls to 0 and 8. We'll step aside, take a 3 minute break and then be back for our post game show. 3 minute break. This is West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Before the invitations and the dress, the flowers, cake, candles, or vows, there is an answer to a question proposed with a ring. Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. WVU Medicine is pleased to introduce eight new providers who've joined University Health Associates East and our medical staffs at Berkeley Medical Center and Jefferson Medical Center. Physician's Assistant Casey Weeble, Emergency Medicine, Dr. Mark Seymour, Anesthesia, Dr. Farman Ali, Neurology, Dr. Christopher Redman, Rheumatology, Dr. Sierra Hart, Emergency Medicine, Physician's Assistant Carly Kremer, Cardiology, Nurse Practitioner Jennifer Gorgal, General Surgery, and Nurse Practitioner Corey LaPai, OBGYN. Welcome to WVU Medicine. Welcome back to Morgan Field as we welcome you into our post-game show brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg with a full lunch and dinner menu, daily specials, and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page. Your final score, Hampshire 42, Berkeley Springs 19. So Hampshire 
gets the win, improves to three and five overall. Berkeley Springs falls to zero and eight on the year. Colin McLaughlin here alongside me, Dylan Bishop for Talk Radio WRNR and TV Ten. Our cameraman is Daryl Miller. Back of the studio is Nick Verzellini. Dylan, while you calculate our post-game stats, those will be brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, West Virginia's largest Pandora retailer on Route 11 South of Inwood, taking care of you like nobody's business. Dylan, are you ready to give those post-game stats or not yet? Yeah, I can give you some here. Uh, Jensen Fields ends up being 3-for-5 through the air for Hampshire, 111 yards and, a t- and two touchdowns. And he adds in a rushing touchdown as well, as well as 44 rushing yards. Uh, Brinker ends up going for 125 total yards, including a 66-yard touchdown catch. So it's a big game for Brennan Brinker. And then Robinson uh, had a big game as well. Xander Robinson added on 57 rushing yards of his, of his own. And then you had... Uh, Caleb Vandevander, who only made one catch. There was only two complete, or three completions in the game in total for Hampshire. Had himself a 25-yard touchdown catch. Two interceptions on the defensive side. And we look at the stats for Berkeley Springs. Aiden Kane ends up being 13 of 22 for 225 passing yards. One passing touchdown. Two rushing touchdowns on two quarterback sneaks. Only ends up with 15 net rushing yards. Some of that being sacks. Uh, to take that number down a little bit. Uh, Shiki ends up with 74 rushing yards, most of that on the two big, you know, double reverses on the last drive. Uh, Kyle Moore for for the Indians ends up with 72 receiving yards. He had himself a really good game, had a couple of really impressive catches. Shiki also had 73 recept- uh, receiving yards on two catches, giving him nearly 150 total yards on the day. So there were some impressive plays for Berkeley Springs. They just, unfortunately, the big stat of the day really was four turnovers. And that's what held them back. They also had a good bit of penalty yardage. They ended up with 70 penalty yards on the day, so not great there. 70 penalty yards, four turnovers. That's not gonna get you that's not gonna get the job done. And when you have Hampshire, you know, approaching you know, two hundred rushing yards, that's kinda how it goes. Forty two, nineteen. That's the expected result when you have that. Let's now get into tonight's awards and let's start off, Dylan, with our electrifying play of the game brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer. Visit them at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online at Orsini's.com. Electrifying play of the game, I think, had to be the pick six right before halftime. That really changed the momentum. Berkeley Springs could have went into the half down just a point, a tie game. But instead, the pick six completely shifts, makes it a two-possession game at halftime, and Hampshire never looked back. So there you go. That's our Cini's Home Store electrifying play of the game. Let's now get tonight's collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street, Martinsburg, family-owned, offering superior customer service, great pricing for a job done by experienced certified technicians. Call 304-901-4777. Visit their Facebook page. With that, I'll go with a blocked punt by Berkeley Springs that got them the ball inside the red zone. And, you know, after a big stop by Hampshire to get the ball back after halftime, Berkeley Springs comes up big with that blocked punt to get themselves back within a score. Well, it would have been within one score if they had converted the two point conversion, gotten it to a seven point game. Berks uh, should, should say if they converted the, the extra point. That was the one where they had the extra point, and they had to take Aiden Kane out because he had gone down with an injury on the touchdown play. So he had to come off, hit the backup holder. The hold never got uh, down for Robles, and it was just off the mark, kept it a nine-point game. But the blocked punt was huge. It could have flipped momentum back around, but that didn't end up being the case. 
All right, there you go. That's our collision of the game. Let's now get tonight's good hands catch of the game brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596. Stop by 724 Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. This will kind of tip the hand on the next award, but it's Caleb Vandevander, the 25-yard touchdown that he had right after his second interception on the very next play, gets himself the 25-yard touchdown. Ball hung up in the air, really should have been an interception, but defensive back didn't make the play, and Vandevander did. And, of course, tonight's player of the game brought to you by Bodwell Insurance Solutions, a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs. Visit them at BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or call 304 304- Two eight three zero eight six four. We'll say that Kyle Moore deserves a shout out, an honorable mention for catch of the game. Had a great thirty-five yard catch down the field, a ball thrown by Ian Kane. But the player of the game is Caleb Vandervander. Two interceptions, had the pick six, had the touchdown on the good hands catch of the game, and that was you know three huge plays right there for Hampshire that helped lead them to victory. So that will wrap things up here at Morgan Field on homecoming night for the Berkeley Springs Indians. They fall to the Hampshire Trojans by a final score of 42-19. For Nick Verzellini, as well as Daryl Miller, Dylan Bishop, my broadcast partner. Dylan, even though it's a bitter night for Berkeley Springs, happy homecoming, buddy. Happy homecoming Still to you. Still fun to do this with us here. First time at Berkeley Springs, getting the call game for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 on our homecoming night. Right. We mentioned it right at the top of the broadcast. Class of 2016, Berkeley Springs. Haven't been back a whole lot of times since then. But it's always it's always fun. It's always, you know, the familiarity. It's always, it's always a positive feeling. Back with Martinsburg football next week as they play host to the Spring Mills Cardinals pregame coverage on Friday night, 6 p.m. kickoff at 7. I'm Colin McLaughlin signing off. This has been West Virginia High School Football and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Let's go! Drink some beers! Mountaineer! The Mountaineer Pub offers many daily specials, including trivia night Mondays, karaoke Tuesdays, steak night Wednesdays and Sundays, only swing night Thursdays, and DJ and or karaoke again Fridays and Saturdays. And remember, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mondays through Fridays is happy hour with $2 domestic bottles and $2.50 domestic drafts. Let's go! Drink some beers! Mountaineer Pub! I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the big boys to the wing T formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for $12 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! Omaha! Rock's 12 pieces of chicken, just $12. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. At the Berkeley County Health Department, our motto is Prevent, Promote, Protect. Since 1935, our mission has been to provide clinical and environmental services to protect the health of the general public. We're committed to building public health in our community by offering a wide range of services, including blood pressure screening, breast and cervical screening, family planning, counseling, lab testing, and more. We perform health inspections to make sure the restaurants you visit are clean, and we prepare and coordinate plans to respond to all hazards. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court, Martinsburg. We welcome you into the post-game scoreboard show. I'm Nick Verzellini. Once again, your final score here tonight from Berkeley Springs High School. The Indians fall to Hampshire 
42-19. to 19. Kaiser, taking as we take a look at some other Potomac Valley scores, Kaiser is in action. They uh, trailed in this one 42-13, to 13, and I believe that was the final, or at least close to the final at this point, so tough one for Kaiser as well. 56-13 is actually going to be your final, as that just updated between Kaiser and Allegheny. Let's take a look at some EPAC scores here tonight. In the EPAC, Spring Mills does a good job of representing the conference. Conference They have extended their lead over University 49-14. to And Jefferson also getting a win here tonight over Millbrook 35-28. So the Cougars should be able to move up in the uh, ratings. And Spring Mills probably will as well as some teams, I believe, ahead of them are going to lose tonight. Musselman Hedgesville, that game scheduled for tomorrow at 11 a.m., from Shepherd University, and we will not have coverage of that one, but 11 a.m. from Shepherd University between Musselman and, Hed- and Hedgesville as we will be at the Shepherd game at Millersville. Some other AAA scores from across the state. Morgantown holds a 34-24 lead over Parkersburg South in the fourth quarter. A lot of good games going on tonight. Huntington on top of Parkersburg, 28-7. to Looks like it's going to be a good win for the Huntington Highlanders over the Big Reds. Hurricane holds a 28-21 lead over Cabell Midland as Cabell Midland and Huntington tied for number one right now in the WVSSAC football playoff ratings. That is a top three matchup, so a lot of significance for teams like uh, Martinsburg, Jefferson, and Spring Mills trying to move up in those AAA Power ratings. Princeton leads Beckley Woodrow Wilson right now in the fourth quarter, 35 to 20. And Wheeling Park leads St. Clairsville, Ohio, 14 to 7. That was last updated at halftime. So we'll see if anything changes with that score. Let's take a look at some other AAA scores from across the state here tonight. Bridgeport getting a big win, not over yet, but all over Preston right now, 52 to seven. A final from Oak Hill High School. Oak Hill gets the win over Buchanan Upshur 27 to seven. St. Albans taking on GW tonight. No score update there. Uh, Brooke looks like they're going to get a win over John Marshall in a high scoring game 49 to 23. And Greenbrier East is going to beat Ripley tonight most likely 33-7 the score there. Riverside all over South Charleston right now 42 to six. So that, so that will do it for high school football tonight. Uh, again, tomorrow we will have Shepherd Rams for you on TV, Shepherd Rams football for you on TV 10 as the Rams take on Millersville. That game kicks off at 2 p.m. with a 1.30 pregame show. So looking forward to that. But this is West Virginia High School Football on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. And I'm Nick Verzellini with your Extra Point Scoreboard Show. And that concludes today's postgame show. Be sure to tune in each week throughout the regular and postseason for more West Virginia high school football. Today's game has been brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, Modern Realty Results, Cody's Auto Body, The Palace Lounge, CMA Honda, Backdoor Jewelers, the Berkeley County Health Department, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Brown's Funeral Home and Cremations, Hagerstown Ford, The Mansion for Ready Law Firm, The Mirius Group of Financial Advisors, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, The Hefley Motor Company, W. Harley Miller Systems, Smallwood and Small Insurance, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Auto Group, Ollie's VIP Lounge, and the Gary Kelly Allstate Insurance Agency. For the best in high school, college, and NFL coverage all season long, keep it tuned in to Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg. All rights reserved.